Okay. Now, before I kind of like go over this, I want to clarify something. There has been AI offers, everything, everybody talking about it for the last year or so. Okay. But I've waited till this day to, to essentially talk about it because I needed real proof. I needed someone to validate that this is actually something that delivers true efficiency into businesses. Okay. I did not talk about it all through 2023. I did not say anything about AI. Okay. Up until we started getting clients who are actually selling them and killing it with selling these offers. Okay. So it once I got undeniable proof that this is actually something that is that is sustainable and something that is truly valuable for businesses. Then we got a few more customers, a few more partners selling it. They started scaling, you know, multiple uh, founders and partners scale past 30K per month in the first 60, 90 days. So I got the proof that I can now talk about it with more people, which is why I ended up doing this webinar. Okay. The topic of today's webinar is how teenagers are skipping the holy and unachievable monthly revenue goal of $10,000 a month and making $12,000 in 25 minutes from uh, by selling AI infrastructures to companies, okay? For those who don't know me, my name is Serge Guattari. I run clientacquisition.io, okay? And uh, this case study is straight from Wyatt. Um, in November of last year, so the 25th of November, uh, he had to pick up a quick landscaping job um, for someone in, you know, in his town who needed his stuff cut down. And uh, he got paid $100, right? He was hustling, grinding to try to get some money for ads. And a month later, less than a month later, he became a partner and um, essentially sold a $12,000 infrastructure, um, AI infrastructure to a business, a lead that came from YouTube and that purchased in 22 minutes. Okay. Uh, we all know how many people push us to try to sell like um, commoditized services like advertising and, you know, lead gen, appointment setting. And most people in these industries have a hard time to even make $10,000 a month after uh, six months, 12, 12 months, even years of trying to get this business started, okay? Uh, why I was able to pull it off with uh, within 30 days, okay? Now, the purpose of this training is really simple. I'll walk you through the five insights allowing our partners to take advantage of the biggest trend I've ever seen. I'll show you the six obstacles keeping you from selling a 50 $100,000 a month worth of AI infrastructures and how to overcome them. And if I succeed in opening your eyes to the potential of this trend and the idea of building and releasing these AI infrastructures, I'll offer you the opportunity to leverage our data, systems, fulfillment to help you launch and scale this offer as a partner. Okay? That is this. These are the three goals. I give you as much value as you can so you know how to actually sell these, build and release these infrastructures. Okay? And at the end, give you an opportunity to uh, work with client acquisition at IO uh, as a partner or as someone that we can incubate before they become partners. Okay. Clarity. Um, I'm going to share in the next two hours information that has taken me the last three years uh, and millions of dollars in payroll and expenses and research. And in return, all I ask is the following block out all the noise and distractions. Okay. Um, you know, if you have your phone by your side, if you have people messaging you, if you have Instagram open, close that down, shut down all the tabs you have and actually focus, okay? The ability to focus nowadays is like, like having the ability to focus is like a billion dollar scale and a billion dollar asset nowadays. So it's really imperative for you guys to actually be mindful about your inability to focus. So I wanna call this out before we get started. Uh, and what I want to do is everyone who who has Instagram, Twitter, X, whatever platform they're on, tag me on your story. At the end, I'm going to give you guys, uh, to the people who actually end up tagging me, I'm going to give you guys access, free access to this doc. And um, I'll pick one person to also join the Q&A after. Okay? So just tag me, blow up the, the social media, and then I'll uh, also reshare your uh, tag. Okay? If you want to access this 80 page doc and want to access the questions at the end, you need to become an NBL member. My team should have added it in the chat. And then um, at the end, we're gonna be having a Q and A uh, where I'll be going through the questions um, that have been added to the form, okay? For those of you who stay till the end, 
I'll show you how to access the AI infrastructure. We're selling without paying the $100,000 um, $100, um, fee for licensing the AI, okay? So if you guys want to actually access the, the infrastructure we're leveraging or partners are leveraging, stay till the end to know how to access it, okay? Now, let's go over some proof. Uh, now, unfortunately, we don't have as many wins as we normally have from our partners selling different infrastructures in different niches, right? For those who have been on our other presentations, uh, you guys should have seen me kind of like share, uh, you know, the different partners we have in uh, the coaching space. We have um, people in the, you know, manufacturing space, selling to businesses in the manuf manufacturing space. Uh, we have people in uh, in helping sales agencies, we have people in the restaurant niche, we have people in e-com, we have people uh, in SaaS. So like e-com, short form content, all this. So we have a lot of proof in that niche, in those niches. But since this is something that is new, we don't actually have many case studies, right? Because it's actually new, right? Later in the training, I'll share an insight which will make you realize how great that it is that we don't yet have many people pushing this AI infrastructure, right? But some of the uh, clients and partners that we have who've been uh, pushing this and seeing results is Wyatt, of course, um, when he, um, you know, he hit a $27,000 um, a month uh, in the first, uh, in a week, the last month in, in February. Um, and um, his before state, so before he started working with us, I'll get him to explain his story down the line and, and, and later in this, today's uh, presentation. But he started by trying to sell GHL systems at 15 years old, right? Spamming every business owner he could find on LinkedIn. I'm sure you guys saw the trend of people getting you guys to sell GHL, which I've never really understood, right? I never understand people who tell you that you can start a business off selling CRMs. It's pretty crazy. Ended up learning about Air.ai and bought into their program early 2023, so last year. Started integrating AI dollars into businesses for $500, $1,000 for each integration. And then at 16 years old, started earning 5K per month, but was capped from scaling since he was selling his time for money, right? Uh, I believe Adam um, referred him to the Natural Born Leader community. And in that community, we shell different programs on how to, on the models we use to scale our partners' businesses. And he learned about the idea to build and release infrastructures, right? The value was so good for just $49 that he en ended up becoming a partner in GCP. And here was the after state. He stopped positioning himself as a commodity with this AI dialer and pushed it as an infrastructure. He went from charging $500 to $12,000, right? And went from making 60 k for the whole year of 2023 at 16, by the way. So like... This is not 60K for like, you know, 60K is already great, but for 16, it's already amazing, right? But he went uh, this year, his, uh, or when I sent this, um, when I was building this training 10 days ago, um, he had he had already collected $110,000 in Q1 of 2024. So his thing is working well. Um, and um, like I showed you guys, he went from landscaping trying to make $100 to collecting $10,000 a pop, right? 14 k in cash collected uh, in the first three days of January, right? Uh, another uh, case study, a few other partners in GCP, which I'll also be getting to present, is Nick and Jax, um, also selling the same AI infrastructure for $8,000 and $400. Um, and then they were so serving local businesses, okay? I think this will resonate with a lot of you guys who are in the lead gen space. So they went from... Serving local businesses, specifically med spas, uh, they were doing the paper appointments uh, appointment offer, uh, or sometimes upfront setup fees with a guaranteed refund if they don't deliver after ninety days, uh, which is pretty crazy. Um, and then they both were able to scale to five to ten k per month with this appointment setting offer in the med spa niche, but they quickly realized that it was insanely hard to grow. They had to leverage. Uh, no, they had no leverage. They had no leverage no employees to delegate the work to, and their clients were pretty shit at closing the leads and the appointments they would generate. So they ended up in the flywheel of acquiring clients only to lose them after because of the because of variables that they couldn't control, right? When you're selling to these businesses, you're not necessarily collecting as much money to be able to afford talent. 
and you're not making enough money to make sense of helping your clients become the best salespeople, right? You don't have the, the, that, the scale or the access to the scale to be able to help them solve these other problems, right? Uh, and then they joined GCP, right? I believe they joined GCP um, before they learned about the AI thing, right? But once they joined the community, they started uh, kind of like seeing wide uh, transformations and uh, learning about the AI um, mechanism for appointment setting in our community. And they decided to test it side by side with their offer, right? And they ended up closing one AI build and release offer and called every MedSpa client to tell them they were done, right? So once they closed their first deal, they essentially shut down their old business, their old offer. 30, 60 days later, they scaled to 35K per month selling this AI infrastructure. No more done-free appointment setting, no more pain and fulfillment as the system and scripts in the AI agent uh, is built once. Now for them, maybe they'll share, but they're doing a lot of also customized work on the, their AI infrastructures that they're building and releasing into companies. But you can easily also just replicate uh, without needing to do customized work, okay? Uh, 4,000, 3.3K. 3, 3 uh, this is what their calendar looks like. Um, another 5K, um, you know, so just, they're just printing really. Uh, and they're both also, I believe, 18 to 19, 20 years old, uh, right? So also young, right? Now, who is this for? Uh, I'll provide more clarity on who this is for by telling you more about who this is not for, okay? So let me clarify that. This is not for you if you prefer fighting uphill battles when it comes to growing your business, right? We all know that there's two types of founders. There are the people who can't sim to be wise enough to, like, to just choose easier games, right? And then there are the ones who actually just fig figure out trends and then they just start winning easy. So if you like to hard do hard things, then this is not maybe for you, okay? If you prefer making $500, $1,500 profit per client and hoping to make 100K profit per month with 100 clients, um, then this is not for you, right? We're not, we don't, we don't recommend any of our partners or clients to sell anything where they make like 500 bucks, a thousand dollar profit per client. Cause in order for you to make meaningful profit, it will take you like a hundred years for you to make any money. Right? So this is not for you. If you're that person, it's not for you. If you want to have something that is uh, hard to fulfill where you can't constantly consistently generate results. So what I mean by this is if you're if you're currently selling something and you want to keep selling something that you're actually not confident that it can generate results to your clients, then this is probably not for you, okay? The thing we're selling is true efficiency. We're selling something that is inevitably, um, that delivers results inevitably, okay? This is also not for you if you want to sell something that everyone can sell easily, okay? Because right now, I just said, you it's not for you if you want to do hard things, but here, I just said that you also do not want to be the one who likes to sell things that are easier to access, okay? Because these are two things completely different. You can choose to do something that is easy to sell, but that is also hard to access for most people, okay? There is a lesson in there, and I'll cover it later. So you don't want to be selling the thing that the lowest barrier of entry leading you to having people having to compete with 5,000 other service providers. That's not what we like to do. If you like to do that, compete with other 5,000 lead gen agencies, appointment setting, cold email agencies, coaches, coaching coaches, then I probably suggest that you, um, yeah, that's, I mean, I highly suggest that this is not for you, okay? If you're not willing to make a slight pivot because you're attached to what you've been doing for the last five to 10 years, which hasn't created much of an outcome for you, then this is not for you. You have to be, you have to learn to pivot. If you're not, then your life becomes a price that you have to pay, okay? It is also not for you if you're not willing to spend the next 90 days acquiring the skills that will make you stand out from the rest of the marketplace. I see so many people are like, oh, I don't want to learn new things. I don't want to spend any time learning. Well, well, okay, well, how do you expect to, 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 be, to be different? How do you expect to commend higher prices? How do you expect to be better? You're not, right? So there's this idea that you actually, while everyone is like, oh, I don't want to learn anything new. I don't want to sit down and master a new skill. 
while everyone is like that, you actually need to be the person who's like, okay, I'll on a Sunday, I'll show up for this webinar and I'll go through the next two hours learning something new because it can give me an edge over most people. Okay. This is also not for you if you prefer average returns, average relationships, and an average life. Right? If if you want an average re if you want average returns, this is probably not for you, right? An average life, this is probably not for you. Okay. So this is going to be uh, appealing to people who um, who don't want slow growth, who don't want average returns on their time. Um, if this is for if that's what you're looking for, if you're looking for easy work, easy returns, uh, and then just get mediocre results, then you can leave right now before we get started. As today's presentation is curated for one simple outcome: How can we experience ten years of growth in a single year? I'll repeat it again. How can we experience 10 years of growth in a single year, right? When we're seeing Elon Musk or when we're seeing OpenAI or Microsoft or NVIDIA, right, add a trillion dollars worth of market cap in a single year, uh, they're not thinking, they're not making bets by trying to be like, oh, let's add an extra 10 grand a month. Let's add an extra a million dollars a year in new revenue. They're thinking like, how can we own the whole market share, right? And the only way they're able to add an extra will be worth $3 trillion or $2 trillion is because they're thinking bigger than, than, than most people can even comprehend. Okay. So that's what I kind of like try to uh, at least invite people to think through is how can you do 10 years worth of work in a single year? How can you experience 10 years worth of revenue in a single year? And um, today I'm going to be sharing that. Okay. So let's get into it. Uh, today's topics, uh, we're going to talk about the universal principle of fast growth that most billionaires leverage, the old $100 million commoditized offer framework versus build and release offer, the number one AI infrastructure to sell in 2024, and then the $30,000 per week and 30 uh, return on ad spend acquisition infrastructure, and the 90% margin retention model for AI growth infrastructure um, uh, sellers, Okay. At the end, I'm going to end it with actually how to retain your people so you can get um, uh, a back end that actually sticks. Okay, cool. Uh, are we are we excited, guys? Um, anybody ready to to get started? I'm just looking at the chat, just making sure. Uh, what is GCP? GCP is our uh, program. Um, so, okay, cool. Let's get into it. Um, now, why should you listen to anything I have to say? Um, well, let me tell you guys a little quick story about me because, you know, I know I've been talking about Wyatt and everyone, but since I'm the one hosting this, at least you guys need to know a little bit about me. I was born in Rwanda. Um, I have three older brothers, and um, I moved to Canada when I was 13, actually. Uh, so I spent a lot of my, uh, I mean, I spent most of my childhood in Rwanda. So I was raised uh, a different way. <laughs> And uh, I I think it helped me kind of like take life a little seriously when I moved to Canada. Um, and um, when I got here, I felt the urge to do something meaningful with my life, right? Uh, for those who, I don't know if there's people here who have migrated from different countries to, um, you know, first world countries, but, you know, you, you see the world a little different, right? So having that thing, that advantage, uh, it led me to, I guess, dropping out of college at 20 years old, which some people may think is bad, but in today's day and age, it's not really that bad. Uh, then I got into door-to-door -door sales. I sold different things like internet services. I sold HVAC stuff. Um, and um, I didn't stay too much in there, but I did get at least um, my experience of knowing that I never want to do door-to-door -door sales ever again. But I got the courage to be able to do it. <laughs> I got the confidence from doing it, right? So sometimes it's good for you to get the confidence from doing hard things, but don't be a dummy and stay in that field, right? A lot of people make the mistake of like, oh, I do hard things. Yeah, but you, you ain't going to make a billion dollars doing door to door. So yeah, learn from it, move on, okay? Then I got into courses, um, started buying courses. 2019, October is when I bought my first course. Uh, I learned, you know, Airbnb, I think is the first investment I've ever made, uh, which was pretty crazy. It was pretty hard to do in, in Montreal, uh, Canada, which is where I live. Um, then I checked out Consulting Accelerator by Sam Ovens. Then I went to, into the agency, 
uh, checked out, you know, Iman stuff, SaaS, checked out Alban Prospect thing by Nick Cosman, um, Amazon FBA, uh, everything, right? But none of it worked for me, to be honest. Um, but, you know, every, you know, back in 2019, I used to, or in 2020, I used to write that I, by 21, I need to be making passive income. <laughs> I think here I was being sold by Grant Cardone that I needed passive income. So I don't know how at 21, I thought I would create passive income, but at least I had um, the idea that I wanted to be a business owner by 21, right? Um, and 2020, July, I ended up quitting um, my job, right? And to go all in with my advertising agency. I got, uh, why did I do this, by the way? Because I realized that so many people are sold like courses and things like that. But they don't realize that it's not the knowledge that I see is going to make you build a business. It's doing the thing that the is applying knowledge, not just keeping on learning things. So at some point, I just got tired of myself saying that uh, I wanted to be a business owner and make all the claims and, you know, read all the books, you know, self-help books. I mean, I had so much I had read so many times uh, the Think and Grow Rich book that I, I mean, I was thinking rich, but I was not rich. I was broke. Right. Um, and I just got tired. I just got disgusted by my my just my fear to go all in, I guess, right? And um 2020, I was like, hey guys, I'm just leaving. I was working at Good Food, which was, you know, half a billion dollar a year. Uh, I think back then during COVID, they did we were doing like a multiple nine figures a year, which was a great company, by the way. They killed it. Um, and I just quit. And uh, I got punched in the face uh, with the fact that I didn't know how to get prospects on a call, wanting to buy my service. I decided to spend six months learning and mastering outbound prospecting. I got so good at it that I started an appointment setting agency due to the high demand of other agencies wanting me to do their outreach for them. Um, in January of 21 is when I made my first $10,000 a month. And uh, I sent my aunt like, hey, do you still want me to go to school? She was like, yes, of course. I don't know why would you would want someone to go to school when they're making 10K a month at 20, 21, 22. Um, four months later, uh, at 30k per month, I actually decided to shut down this business due to through four reasons. High churn, clients were dropping off every other month. I was like, what the hell? And the second thing is low retainers. I wasn't make I wasn't charging enough money. Okay. So I wasn't, I didn't have enough margins. The second, the third reason is that I lacked leverage. I didn't have the team. It was just me, Reg and a team of like 10 VAs that we were leveraging to do outreach. And uh, clients lacked the necessary skills to grow their business. This was actually the biggest bottleneck. I was helping people who didn't have nothing in place. So even though I was good at generating them leads and appointments, they couldn't do nothing with it. So it was almost like I'm doing all this hustle only to be times to be multiplied by zero because they have literally zero skills. And it, my effort didn't mean nothing because... Any number multiplied by zero is zero, okay? So I ended up creating a well-paying job for myself and became a slave to the business. Uh, Monday through Sunday, I had to attend to fires since I, I felt, uh, but since I felt like my potential was greater than just being a slave to my business that's making me 30K per month, which was a lot of money because on my job I was making 30K a year. But at some point, once you actually start making money, you realize that money is, you only realize that money is nothing until you start making a little bit of money, right? So I felt like my potential was greater, so I shut it down. Uh, this was me in the basement. I still need to get a GT3, by the way. This was a GT2 RS. I'm, I was still looking at pictures last night before going to bed. So for all the car guys, all the car ladies, you know, please support me into my dream of driving a Porsche one day. <laughs> I'm going to get at it eventually. Um, so I shut down the, the appointment setting done for you business, and then I started building and releasing growth infrastructures, right? Now, the idea here was, instead of just doing appointment setting, I would solve the whole gap for them, right? So I would come into their business. I'm like, hey, you need appointment setting, yes, but your offer is shit. You can't communicate your value. You can't sell. So how about this? I'm going to come in, charge you $15,000 for the whole thing. I'm going to build and release this appointment setting infrastructure in your business so you don't have to pay me month after month. But I'll also consult you on your other bottlenecks. The outcome where I made my first hundred grand a month or months later after launching this offer. Okay. I think you can see here the proof. Uh, this was the PL in November 2021. 
uh, made 76k profit and this was if i showed you how what were my stripe notifications before with done for your appointment setting you guys would cry right i mean i would cry at least at least i would actually give up on business if i was if i had to look back on on the things i was doing for 700 bucks a month right 18 months later i made my first 600 grand in a month um and um 267k cash profit and 424 uh profit um uh, in, in total, right? The idea here was I went from being a done for you, like commoditized service here to building a more specialized offer, right? Where I would build the infrastructure in their business. And I would also make sure that I'm the person who can make it inevitable for them not to bridge this gap. So if a client wanted to make 30 K per month, I would not only just build them their acquisition appointment setting thing. I would also consult them on their offer, create their VSL and everything like that. Sales, all that good stuff. OK. And that was uh, that was me. Right. And if we look at the identity that I had designed when I went through Consulting Accelerator by Sam Ovens, um, you know, I, I, I think, you know, the only thing is I haven't made two kids and I haven't found a wife yet, but I'm working on it. <laughs> but we're working on it. But uh, I think everything else I've kind of like achieved. Right. I've made the millions, um, you know. I've I've be, I've become the person I set out to be, right? So I'm sharing this because um it's 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 not the money that matters, but it's becoming who you set out to become, right? So the reason why we're 400 people are in today's uh presentation is because it's not because money. Like money is cool, but like do you guys know who you need to become and are you guys going to do everything you need to be to to do to become that person? I knew for me that I would be I would need to spend time alone. Right? So this guy in my opinion, this guy who's on the the lake thing, I was like, some days I'm going to sit in front of the moon and just be alone in my own thoughts, right? The books were for knowledge. The cars, I mean cars, I love cars. Focus, I needed to be focused, right? Greatness ahead. Alexander the Great, I mean he was what, 16 years old conquering whole Europe. Talk about someone who's um who's inspirational, right? I needed a view uh, in my bedroom. Um, I don't think anyone here has ever been in my bedroom, but if you guys were to visit my bedroom, you guys would see that. That's also kind of like, um, I've kind of like done that. Um, now I live here in this little penthouse. Um, and, you know, I just like to go to places, beautiful places, beautiful sunsets, uh, bring my team to retreats and clients, of course. Um, and um, and we just like to enjoy um, and, you know, experience life a little bit together. Okay. Now, uh, what is our mission? Our mission is we create growth experts and partner with them to sell infrastructures, uh, applying the same uh, playbook I leveraged to go from zero to $7 million in cash collected in the last 2.5 years, right? Um, my goal with today's Webby is to create the next wave of growth creators who sell AI infrastructures. And in the future, I'll pick the top 10% of to become partners right? Um, shall we get started in the first lesson, guys? Let me know in the chat. I want to know in the chat. Are we still focused? Are we? Um, I'm from Rhonda as well. Oh, love it, Ben. Um, all right, guys, let me know. Let me know. Richard. Okay. Richard has bad energy. <laughs> uh, should I, should I get NBL if I'm a beginner? You should get an NBL. Yeah, of course. Right. Um, all right, so let's uh let's get started. First lesson, let's go. All right, the universal principle of fast growth that most billionaires leverage, right? Um, I've spent the last few years learning about decision making, mental models, and most importantly, specific principles the largest organizations and CEOs leverage to create infinite returns for their shareholders and organization, right? And there's one thing that they all agree with, so much so that I've made it a foundation for all reasoning and decision-making when it comes to picking the right path to follow with my own business, right? And for me to um, to actually share this with you guys, uh, I want to kind of like share an, uh, an expert from um, uh, a little... So I was listening to this podcast like five, four days ago, and uh, Bray Jacobs was the first time that I've ever heard of him. Apparently, he's a billionaire. Uh, he's in the logistics space. Uh, but he shared such an insightful thing that I would I would prefer him saying it instead of me saying it. So I'll actually play this real quick and you guys can tell me um, 
what you guys think. Okay, so let's get into it. And this is a podcast I recommend everyone to watch, by the way. So let me just show you guys. Cool. So we'll just go here. Boom, 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 boom. All right. All right, cool. So I'll just share it on my computer because you guys cannot hear it with this mic. All right. Uh, no, thanks. I run the same system. Uh, let me know in the chat if you guys can hear it, okay? You said you can get a lot of things wrong if you get the big trend right. Can you guys hear it? Yep. All right, fire. Let's go. You answer that. You said you can get a lot of things wrong if you get the big trend right. What major trend are you most interested in right now? I'm most interested in AI because it is the trend. It is the number one trend whereby our technology, the software, that intelligence will be able to consume so much information, much more than we human beings can, even with 100 billion brain cells. The, the power of compu computing is so much greater and be able to then analyze that and be able to spit things out and be able to eventually, I, I'm looking forward to the point where computers become emotional where they do have emotion, where they do have empathy, just like we have mirror neurons in the front of our brain, in the prefrontal cortex. I'd like to see that trend fruit to materialize where computers can feel, can have theory of mind, can be sitting here with a conversation with Shane Parrish and, and feeling what you're feeling and, and feeling happy about what you're feeling happy about and feeling sad about something you're not feeling happy about. I'm looking forward to that trend a lot. No, the saying AI is sort of everybody recognizes AI as being a trend, but you've spotted several trends well before people recognize them. And you were way ahead on the AI curve too, as I understand it. Yeah. How do you spot the, those trends before they become mainstream? Well, I do spend a lot of time thinking about trends. I look, I spend a lot of time thinking about the wider context of things like, okay, here's a situation. What's the context of that situation? what's its origin, what's its present conditions and characteristics, what are the ways it could go, and what would be the catalyst to make it go right or straight or left. So I, I intentionally think about trends quite a bit because in business, in the business world, you've got to get the major trend right. You've got to get the major trend right. And as my main business mentor, may he rest in peace, Ludwig Jesselson used to say. Pay attention to this, guys. Okay. This is the most important part. You can mess up a lot of things, but if you get the main trend right, you're going to make a lot of money. And conversely, if you don't get the main trend right, you're swimming upstream. You can do a lot of other things right, but you're not going to make a lot of money. So I, I intentionally spend time thinking about what's the, where does all this fit in and where could it be going? What's your research process? All right. All right, so I want to go over that again, okay? So he said two things. You can get a lot of, and his, it's from his mentor, by the way, so I think his mentor is pretty smart. But he said this thing, you can get a lot of things wrong, but if you get the big trend right, no, he said, no, he said it this way. Let me repeat it. You can get a lot of things wrong if you get the big trend right. And conversely, if you don't get the main trend right, you can do a lot of things right, but you won't make a lot of money. Okay. Anybody want to anybody want to drop in the chat what why why this is a universal truth? Anybody knows anything about, you know, a little bit of, you know, macroeconomics and want to share their idea as to why this is true in the chat? Why is it the case that no matter how good you are at a lot of different things, how you how good you are at like legion or appointment setting or sales? Why is it so that the people are, who have all those skills still never end up being the ones making a lot of money. Anybody want to want to share that insight? The market wants the market what the market wants. Sick. Where the eyes goes, uh, money flows. I joined previously. Took the, okay. It supercharges your success. Makes market reach equilibrium after too many people join it, because they are a commodity. Supply and demand. Insurgent capitalists are building Schmertle. What? <laughs> 
Okay, I love it. Uh, if the market demand is so high, as long as you position yourself right in the right niche space before it takes off, then the market will demand. I love it. Exactly. Guys, I'm going to share a few things, right? Um, but it has nothing to do with how good you are at appointment setting and sales, which is why for me, when, pe when I see these marketers sell tactics, I still don't, for me, it doesn't make any sense. I'm like, how is a setter going to scale my business? Right? How is using Facebook ad or YouTube ad or TikTok or like YouTube? Like, those are all commoditized tactics. Everybody's already doing them. So there's no edge in them. Right? But let's try to use a crypto as an example. Right? As I was writing this, crypto was Bitcoin was around 67 grand. The person who bought it that day and rides it, lets it to 100 grand, will probably make 50% on their money. But the person who bought it a year ago, already experienced 300% um, 300 gain. The person who bought it five years ago at, at $4,000 has, has made 16 times their money. The person who bought it in 2017 at 1,000 uh, 1, bucks cost, cost for the Bitcoin has already made um, six times more than the person who bought it five years ago, okay? The difference between last year's investment in BTC and seven years ago is 64 times your money, right? It has nothing to do with the fact that you know how to, which, which, which app to use for Bitcoin. Just the, the most important thing is when did you get in the movement, okay? It's, you, don't, you didn't have to be smart. You didn't have to be anything. You just, just start early, right? And I want to share to you what, to, to you guys what happened for me. So with the appointment setting trend, you know, I'm sure you guys are seeing the appointment setting trend going on. Uh, I was sold on the idea of starting an ads agency when I started out with the agency, right? I think Iman had the course on ads agency, agency incubator. Uh, and I spent six months only to get 4K per month at my peak, selling to broke coaches and consultants. Like it took me six months to make 4K a month, okay? And in the Facebook groups and courses I was in, I only saw people struggling to scale past 10 to 20K per month. I didn't really see many people making money. I just saw more, most people struggling, right? And at first, I was struggling with booking sales calls for my agency. But after mastering the process of leveraging $3 an hour VAs uh, from the Philippines, I was able to solve this problem, right? But then I started noticing patterns, Okay. The market we're being taught to target, uh, the market we were being taught to target, um, you know, are broke, specifically online B2B services, right? All the agency courses had no clarity when it came to booking calls. They would only suggest you to cold call, send cold email, run ads. But there were so, there were so much friction and doubt that most people never did anything with it. And one of the insights I had was, I'm sure Iman, Sam Ovens, Ty Lopez. Uh, would not stop selling courses and creating more problems. So I made the executive decision to shut down the ad agency and went all in uh, with the done for you appointment setting um, service, right? What took me uh, six months, it took me six months to make 4K a month with the appointment setting offer. It took me 60 days to make 10K per month and 90 days to make 30K per month. I did not work any harder, guys. I did not get any smarter. I just saw a movement. And I just positioned myself and I aligned myself with that movement, right? And I want to kind of like give you guys a quick um, trend analysis that I kind of like did because this is going to show you guys even better um, kind of like what this thing looks like. Okay, one second. I want to show you guys this thing, this trend analysis that I did to show you guys how trends have evolved in the current online space that we're in. So let's look at this, okay? Back in 2015, 2017, when people, um, you know, when we had Facebook ad just ripping, right? When the cost per lead, uh, you could just spend $5 and you could book appointments and everything like that, right? So you had that, that new thing, that catalyst, okay? And then movements arise from that. Okay, so when a new mechanism like Facebook ad comes out in 20, I don't know when it came out, maybe 2013, 2014, 2011, whatever, I forgot. Um, new movements come from it, okay? But for me, I started 
leveraging this movement in 2020. That's like seven years later, right? And what was the outcome? From 20, I started, I quit my job right, right around here. You can look at the revenue. It wasn't much. I only made 12 grand from my business in that six months timeline, okay? Now, do you guys want to know who made the most amount of money with this trend? Who want to guess in the chat? The actual trend of um of of uh, of of let's say advertising platforms like Meta, course creators, Iman, who else? Becker, personal brands, early movers, Ty Lopez. Okay, perfect. So now let me show you guys what the real money makers were. Who the real money makers were? They were the people. Coaching, selling information on how to use this. Okay. You can think of Formosi, you can think of Sam Ovens, right? You can think of all these guys, right? Oops. One second. None of them made any meaningful money from selling the actual service. I mean, for sure, some of them did done for you, but most of the money were leveraged into helping people jump in. The people, who, I think when, when Hormozzi was also doing Done For You in gyms, he was also killing it back then. Like gym launch was going through, like blowing up because they didn't have much competition in that field, right? But the other people also who won is someone like Alex Becker. Why? Because as Ty Lopez, as Iman Gadzi trains people to become agency owners, okay, then these agencies need better tracking in order to get their clients better results okay so do you see how just positioning yourself to a trend or helping a trend evolve faster is the fastest way to make money you can look at uh, even circle like platform course hosting platforms you know 200 million dollars right i believe school is probably going to be worth like almost nine probably it's probably already over worth over nine figures by the way right? Because I was listening to this podcast and school has, I believe, six times more traffic than Circle, which, but Circle has raised millions and millions of dollars, by the way, $25 million in Series A, right? At a $200 million valuation, but they're getting six times the traffic. That means that they're getting six times the traffic. They're probably getting six times the customers and they're probably going to make even more money than, um, than, than the Circle. So I believe Sam Ovens is probably building a half a billion dollar company in the next uh, 24 months, literally. Like it's stupid, crazy, right? But let me show you guys how I personally leverage this thing. I got this insight and I was like, man, there's something wrong with me just with this advertising agency. The people I'm selling it to don't have money. They're broke. They're complaining. They're saying, I've already seen this. I don't want to work with you. They're like, oh, can you give me a guarantee? Can you refund me if it doesn't work? Can you use your own money for ads? I'm like, what the hell? Right? You know what I decided to do? I decided to do like, hey, I'm going to just stop this shit. Fuck the advertising agency. And then I just decided to look at a different movement. I was like, okay. Agencies are being sold by Iman to wear a nice linen shirt and make an onboarding video, okay? But they're not being told how to actually do appointment setting. So I'm like, okay, let's go. Let's get to work. I build the operations for appointment setting. I build, start building and releasing, and I make $6 million. I mean, I've, we've made more than that. This is just off of Stripe, $6.2 million um, in the last 24 uh, months, right? Was Did I necessarily become smarter in 24 months than I was in the last five years, three years of trying to make money online? No. All I did was align myself with a better trend, right? Does that make sense, guys? Let me know in the chat. Perfect. All right, let's get back to it. Seeing patterns is like learning to see the matrix, right? So while everyone is being given something to sell, you should not rely on anyone else telling you to sell anything. You should be seeing the things. You should be seeing the movements. You should be seeing, you should be recognizing patterns, right? 
we also did this with uh, one of one client like uh, a year and a half ago uh, who was also doing advertising for brands. Uh, we started seeing TikTok become a platform. Then we started seeing the boom in UGC. And we were like, hey, you should actually stop the Snapchat ads. You should stop the Facebook ad. They had been stuck at 25K per month for since they've ever started their business. And uh, Amar, after he joined uh, our old program, we got him to jump into TikTok UGC started making 60K per month in seven weeks. Was this necessarily because he was the smartest UGC expert? No, he just got in early, right? So let's go over the trend today. The trend today is AI, right? But to clarify, AI itself isn't in and of, isn't in and of itself a useful trend. Like, I think a lot of people are also confused. And this is why it's important for, for us to, for me to do this webinar, right? AI in and of itself, is a commodity, right? What's valuable are the use cases and proper application of the technology, as an example. Klarna um, replaced 700 people, or I don't, I don't think they replaced. They built this AI tool, this AI agent, to do the workload of 700 employees, right? That was 2.3 million customer service chats in 35 languages, handled by a single chatbot or by a single uh, app, okay? The impact, $40 million worth of profit improvement in 2024, right? $40 million, guys, in customer service saved just like that, okay? Speed and efficiency. Their customers can now resolve queries in two minutes compared to to leveraging um, customer service reps uh, who would take 11 minutes, right? That is insane. Not only do you save $40 million, but you also get five times, five times more efficiency. That's amazing, right? Who would want to save $40 million per year and not have to manage 700 employees? Anybody here has worked in customer service? Because that was my job before, right? Customer service is a big, big, big department to manage right anybody here ever and and you know that a lot of the, the things that can be done by a by a rep can easily be put into an ai agent right um now how much do you think Klarna would have paid an ai infrastructure agency to build this for them forty thousand dollars four hundred grand four million dollars how much do you guys think a um this business would have paid to get this um this efficiency can someone put it in the chat or how much would you guys be willing to pay to get 40 million dollars worth of savings every year right let me know in the chat we got to blow up the chat guys we got to blow up the chat i know it's sunday i know maybe some of you guys went out last night but i need engagement four million dollars 20k minimum 10 million 400k 4 million Four million is still ten percent of of one year's worth of efficiency, right? So that means that imagine if you're like, hey, it's forty million savings, but you experience it over the next ten years. That's four hundred million dollars worth of savings, right? Um, it's a lot. It's a. I mean, I'd be willing to spend half of the forty million to be honest, right? It's impressive. Okay, cool. Now, an even more interesting question is, how many businesses do you think? are starting to look for AI infrastructures that can resolve their customer service department when they saw Klarna's report. How many, how many businesses, uh, if you were like running a SaaS company, software company, e-com company that has customer service, how fast will you act when it comes to implementing the same tool? Everyone is on this thing, right? Now, how hard do you think agencies that implement this infrastructure will work hard to acquire clients, right? I can promise you that. You can finish today's call, webinar, go figure out how Klarna did it, find a, an engineer to do it for you, run ads today, okay? If anyone does it, I'll give you $5,000, okay? You figure out how Klarna did it. I don't know if they use a foundational model like OpenAI, figure out how they leverage it, go run to e test these following niches, e-com, go to software, SaaS, SaaS companies, and uh, 
you want to go after companies that have high volume of, of, of purchases. You don't want to go after like an agency owner and say, oh, I can help you not have to onboard your clients. That's stupid. They ain't even got clients anyway in the first place, right? So you go after e-com and software, okay? Launch Legion ads. I'll promise you, you'll probably get like 5 to $10 cost per lead. You'll probably get $20 booked calls. If you sell, I'll give you five grand to cover your cost of acquisition, okay? And I'm sure no, not many agencies are even doing this, right? I'm sure there are some, right? But there are not that many, okay? But this is kind of like some of the, the opportunities that are, present to, uh, that are presented to us today, okay? Now, um, today, I want to go, now I want to go into the AI infrastructure that you guys should be selling in 2024. Uh, Wyatt, I'll let you present, share your story, and then we can uh, get into the actual presentation. You can uh, go ahead. Yo, 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 what's up? What's up? Um, welcome, welcome. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Let me go ahead and show you uh, what, what I've got here. So um, this is kind of like my story, how I got into selling AI, um, everything kind of in between. I'll try to make it short for you guys. Um, ever since I can remember, I wanted to be rich AF. Uh, when Even when I was 10 years old, I was trying to figure out how to make money online. I tried Fiverr, pretty much everything. Um, I didn't really care what it was. I'd try any and everything. Um, that was me when I was, uh, I think, like 12 or something. I was I was very fat. Um, but I even went on like those scam apps where they pay you like two cents an hour to take surveys. Uh, and then I was doing them like every single day I'd log on and, and hit it up. But eventually at the age of 15, I put the, I put together my first proper business plan. Uh, this is going to be an e-com store called Legendary Tees. Uh, in this store, I would drive traffic from TikTok um, and powerful quotes that people would say like David Goggins. Then for every single post, I'd make a t-shirt that would go with the post with his quote on it um, to simply say I did not make a single sale. Uh, but I did learn something very valuable uh, that this... this <laughs> That business is going to be hard, you know, um, there's definitely, uh, you know, there, there can be rainbows, but there's going to be lightning in it as well. And my next business venture was uh, going to do pressure washing. I found this model on, on like satisfying videos on TikTok and somebody was pressure washing. I was like, dude, I got to do that. Uh, and, and it was very business focused. Um, and, I, and I was like, hey, I, I can do that. That's so easy. Um, luckily, after doing some digging in my grandma's garage, I was able to find a pressure washer. I was rough and, and definitely missing pieces. Uh, there were fixes that I could do. Um, for less than like 50 bucks. So I went for it and went ahead and spent the only $50 I had to get the thing fixed up. Um, I then had the logo went ahead and made and I eventually called it like all star pressure washing and outdoor cleaning. Got the business card right here. So y'all know this isn't fake shit. I ordered like a thousand of these only ever gave out like one or two. So um, got 900 of those sitting in the um, in, in my uh, closet. I ordered thousand, you know, and after that, I was ready to get work. I had my mom drive me everywhere in town where I could put up my card. You know, I put it up in like the post office, other places, not many p places where I live. I live in a very small town in the middle of the country. Uh, then I was able to pick up multiple jobs and made my first couple thousand dollars. But it was very little money um, and I wasn't very satisfied. So I came across uh, a guy named Iman Godzi on YouTube, like many of you probably have. I became obsessed with the idea of make money online after only uh, after kind of busting my ass for two months straight pressure wash and making thousands of dollars, just not really, it wasn't it, you know, I was waking up every day, I had to go work, you know, I didn't want to do that. So I, you know, tirelessly watched his videos, sometimes even multiple times, trying to learn and really feeling like I was getting better, or in reality, it was just a whole waste of time. Uh, and it, I had like this super unique idea of running a marketing agency like Serge had, it was very unique, and not everybody was doing it. Um, but but it, in reality, everybody was doing it. Um, that agency was highly marketing. I didn't have a niche. I would message business accounts on Instagram from my business account. So like highly mar marketing was messaging people. So uh, if you guys DM y'all, y'all know how bad that is. Uh, I never even had like, uh, I never even opened Facebook ads. So it was like, I was just scamming people. Essentially, I had no clue what I was doing. Um, I simply did, you know, it's horrible. And I thank God that nobody actually ever responded because they would have been scammed. Uh, I was able to land one sales call, though. It was from a Facebook group for a freelance language education company that I didn't even remember the name of. Um, and essentially, it, I remember it like it was yesterday. I was I was super um, scared on the sales call. You know, I was like, I was just like shaking on the call and everything. I wore like a button up shirt because that's what I saw people online doing. And my heart was pounding, barely knew my pitch deck. And it was a mess. And as you know, I probably, you know, didn't go ahead and close that. After that, I realized what I was doing was going to be super hard to scale. So then uh, I was just like, you know, maybe marketing isn't for me. 
Later on, I decided to try something new. Um, I came across a guy named Max Persson on YouTube. He was selling people into the idea of, you know, starting to sell go high level SaaS for like $297 a month, like super low ticket, um, selling the people. And it was honestly horrible. You know, I didn't make much money at all from it. I dumped thousands in the go high level trying to learn um, this venture, which was SaaS. Uh, you know, I joined this free stuff. At the time, it was a free uh, Facebook group. Now he's moved to school. Uh, and, it, you know, I, ca I called it highly CRM. So instead of highly marketing, it was highly CRM. Uh, and it just didn't go very good. It was, it was different. Um, and it actually did bring me a little bit of money. So it was like my first experience of making money online. Uh, but it still didn't even compare to what I was doing when I was doing um, the pressure washing. Uh, you know, I went through it all and it, I was just horrible at sales. And I didn't even really make money for that reason. My close rate was like less than 1%. I had like, uh, I was getting sales calls, but I just wasn't closing them. So then I started booking calls. I worked with an appointment booking lead gen service, paying like 25 bucks per call. Like I said, I didn't really close any. Um, all 50 had zero closes. So um, that's pretty bad. As most people would guess, you know, this was a huge render to the business. And it took me even more calls to get them to show. And my show rate was like three out of 10. So it was really bad. But eventually I came across a program called Scale 13. The best part was this wasn't a trap like Emons and Max Persons. This program helped me um, from the front end to even though uh, I didn't get a lot of advocate of courses, you know, I, I really liked this course, even though I, I hate them in a lot of places. They taught me everything I needed to know and ultimately opened my eyes to a new business model, which was marketing. Uh, as I did it before with a niche and actually doing it and doing it in the right way, you know, instead of like Iman Yadzi's way where it's like, oh, just message people like they really helped me guide me and, and get me into a right place. So I launched a new agency called Law Launch. Of course, that shut down now because I'm going all in and on AI. But uh, this was the new agency and this is what I thought was going to go big. And it just didn't, you know, and the owners of Scale 13 did help me a lot, though, because, you know, I, I had all that support from them that they were Caleb, Thomas, Ryan, Stephen, all of them. They were super supportive and it was going to do good. We were going to kill it with this agency um, and, and, you know, give you some background on Caleb. He made over two hundred and seventy thousand dollars at the age of 14. So he was a huge inspiration to me at the time when I was 15. Uh, so eventually I, I came across this new software that were, they were making. It was called Air AI. Little did I know this software was going to be literally a huge shift in everything I do. I was just going to integrate it with Law Launch and sell it as part of the services. But after I saw like the uh, the the chances of doing that compared to just selling it on its own, I was like, holy shit, I need to go all in on this. So they let me in the closed beta before it was even called Air AI when it was just like blank, you know, um, and I wanted to try it out myself. And after using a little bit of this tool, I absolutely fell in love with it and had to learn how to sell it. At the time, there's no affiliate or reseller program. There's nothing. But I was begging Caleb and Thomas to actually create one. And eventually they did. Uh, when they did, you know, I took that next step and devoted a substantial amount of time in perfecting my craft with the software um, and ultimately not even selling it until I had used it for at least six months. I realized the importance of investing time and learning the software and it paid off significantly. Um, you know, like I said, four, six months before I even made my first sale, just because I wanted to learn it, even though I'll, arguably I could have. Um, YouTube, uh, essentially, when you look up area on YouTube, you know, I got so big and, and I built this huge audience around it because I was really the only guy uploading. Uh, so when you look up area on Google, like my face pops up before even the founders do. So I, I built this huge audience. I learned to own the attention around Air AI. And simply, I've obtained um, an expertise and, and maintained it, enabling me to start selling the software to people. Before dwelling further, I do want to address like, you know, how these YouTubers like uh, th this guy, I'm not going to name drop. I don't even know his name off the top of my head. Um, they tell people to start AI automation agencies. And that's just frankly not the way to go. And you're not going to be profitable with that. It's just a BS business model where he's the only person actually making money on it, not not his people. Um, and eventually that that's what got me into meeting Serge Guattari. Uh, like, like he said, a guy named Adam referred me to the Natural Born Leaders community. Um, it was $50 a week introduced me to all of Surge's value. And I, I quickly learned, you know, that an AI product just independently is not enough. Even though I was making enough money, I was making a couple thousand bucks. You know, it was the best online business venture I'd ever done was selling Air AI. Uh, although I made some sales consistently earning five to 10 grand a month, Surge em uh, emphasized me to go ahead and start lever uh, adding leverage to my operations. And that led me to joining GCP. Um, and, it, you know, it's essentially a program where he comes in, he helps you with very, pretty much everything. After joining the program, Serge personally guided me on a Loom video on how to refine my offer. On the top, uh, on the top of that, I, I raised my prices substantially um, into the five-figure range. Uh, consequently, my earnings surged within two weeks of joining the uh, GCP. And I took my agency's revenue to like 35K that month, I believe, within first month of joining. So it's absolutely insane. So this um, achievement left me 
ecstatic. I was super pumped. So now what I do full time is I help people kind of replicate my success um, when it comes to selling AI. And furthermore, FastPass, through all my hardships, are learning these AIs, learning it for six months, and then making these connections with these founders and stuff to even get access to sell it. And instead, let people use AI and other tools and use my team as um, fulfillment partners. So that, that's kind of like a uh, rundown of me and, and my story. Love it. Love it. That was a, that was a fast story timeline. Uh, just to summarize, yeah. <laughs> cause you're going through it like, uh, like you had a gun, you were held at gunpoint. Uh, but all to say this, that Wyatt is that kid that was in the basement, just grinding, trying to make money with GHL, trying to make money with all different opportunities. Um, and I, I guess, you know, you, I guess you got lucky, right? You got lucky and got into the, this, um, the, their, their beta program before they started kind of like pushing and selling licensing fees for yep. the air that AI. And, um, and he just started selling it through done for you and he would integrate it. And then, um, when he joined the program, I was still kind of like a little off because I, I had no experience into like AI, right? I didn't, I had not seen I had not experienced a lot of use cases when it came to AI. So I wasn't so sure that we could actually even help Wyatt, right? But when he told me that he was selling it for 500 bucks or a thousand making five grand a month, I was like, what are you doing? Like, this is not a job. Like you're not, you stop selling your time, right? You build a business around it. And because if you're making 500 bucks per client, you're not going anywhere. You're not going to afford any type of anything. Um, that's when he kind of like switched to more of like building and releasing the infrastructure and leveraging that positioning. And, um, and he started selling it for 10, 12 grand. Right. But let's get into it. And then I'll show you guys, um, kind of like the process. Right. So that's when he came in selling it, integrating. Right. So he was selling it more so like a, like, a, um, so there's two ways of selling AI. You can either be like, Hey, I'll just come in and integrate this agent. Um, I'll sell it. You know, I'll do it myself as a sole proprietor, as a freelancer, and you can, you can, you can sell, you can do it yourself and charge 500 bucks. You'll be able to pay for your own food, you pay for rent, but you will not actually build a business, right? What Wyatt is doing is selling it as an infrastructure, okay? Which is completely different than just integrating. It's like me coming to you and I'm like, hey, I'm going to integrate your GHL. Well, I'm not going to pay $20,000 for you to set up a GHL, but if you tell me, Hey, I'm going to come in, leverage GHL to build you in a client acquisition infrastructure, throw in the VSL, throw in the sequences, throw in the webinar sequences, anything that you will ever need to do to make money. Then that same foundational tool that is commoditized for 97 a month can be sold for multiple five figures uh, as an infrastructure. Okay. That's what why it's offer kind of like looks like. Okay. Now, even though customer service represents a great opportunity, the AI infrastructure that most of our partners are selling solves an, an even greater problem, which is appointment setting, right? Uh, why is appointment setting the biggest obstacle? I'm sure you guys have started, started offers, launched offers. The biggest bottleneck that whether someone is starting out or someone who's already making a million dollars a month struggle with, struggles with is more booked calls. Everyone, it's a universal problem. It's a universal pain. When you have white space on your calendar, that's when you feel like shit. That's when you feel like you don't even know where you're going, right? But when you have a full calendar, you feel like you're on top of the, on top of the, of the world, right? And funny enough, it's the one mechanism that hasn't yet been solved by technology at a sustainable cost, right? Advertising can get you leads at a good cost, but when you try to scale, uh, with a simple VSL funnel or direct booking, uh, the cost per booked call goes through the roof, right? I'm sure a lot of you guys have kind of like tried maybe advertising uh, and you know how expensive booking calls through ads can be, right? And the other option path is you're forced to build appointment setting teams to reduce cost per lead, cost per booked calls, uh, cost per booked call, uh, as people are more convincing than uh than a landing page or a VSL, right? So people will always perform better than a VSL. Then uh, you need to get into building appointment setting teams. But then to successfully do it, you need a big pool of setters as the churn is high in this role. You need to manage them every hour of the day. You need to make sure that they're reaching out every lead in less than five minutes, right? If they don't engage with them in five minutes or less, your conversion will drop by 80%, okay? 
and you need a constant review process to make sure they're performing, right? You need to do all of this to actually be prof to be sustainable with this cost, okay? Every business is sold leads and funnels, but not many people can successfully solve this appointment setting problem because it's a non-leveraged service. Anyone who's currently doing appointment setting know how hard and tedious that service is, right? Even those who offer it do a poor job because it's annoying, right? It's annoying having to reach out to people. It's, it's hard. It's, it's, it, it takes a toll on the, even the, in the human doing the work, right? So it's really everything, every single process around appointment setting today is not the best, right? Now, why is AI becoming the best solution for this problem? Okay, I want to walk you guys through the kind of like the current um, tool that uh, our partners are selling, Wyatt, Nick, and Jax, and everyone, right? Uh, and why are they willing to invest this much into it? How is Wyatt closing $14,000 in a day? How is he collecting $10,000 uh, um, off of this AI infrastructure? How and why, right? Um, another 9K. So the idea here is the following. And I... One of the things that I actually do is I'll get Nick and Jax to kind of like present, but I want to kind of like explain these, these three, four main reasons. Work capacity, okay? Cost, no management, and the volume, okay? I'll let uh, the volume part be answered by Nick and Jax. So Nick and Jax, I'll get you guys to jump in real quick. So first of all, let's talk about capacity. The, the AI is available 24-7 while a water a setter only works four to five hours per day at most right they might be say that they're available for eight hours a day nine hours a day but really the productivity is only happening for four hours a day the efficiency it is infinitely more efficient than a human okay because it sticks to the script right cost most setters get a monthly base and five to seven percent of the deal they set so as an example, if you're selling a $10,000 offer, you're going to give them one, a 1.5K one, 1 base, right? And let's say $500 per, per deal. If they bring in 10 deals per month, you're ending up having to um, pay each setter, let's say 6.5K per month. The AI dialer that Wyatt, Nick, Jax, Dylan, everyone is integrating into solar businesses, insurance businesses, agencies, coaching businesses, um, Contractor businesses cost 11 cents per minute. Okay? Check this out. If you had it work 24 7, like 20, all the 24, every minute in, in a day, that would be 14, let's say 1400 minutes. Times 11 cents is $158 per day that you pay them, that you pay the AI, if it's working 24 hours a day, right? The most amount of money you pay. It's four thousand dollars seven hundred, if it work if it works twenty four hours, twenty four seven in a month, right? It will never cost more if it's working twenty four hours a day, more than one setter who's working four hours a day and only may be able to reach to reach a hundred two hundred prospects per day, right? But the third idea here is that they don't have to manage it, right? The only thing you need to do, make sure it triggers when you leads or when you give it a lead list. And you don't need to pay any managers, no team leads, so no management. Managing a team of setters is the hardest part ever. If you guys have ever lead a sales team, it is one of the hardest things to do because you got to make sure the team is motivated. You got to make sure that people are consistent. You got to make sure that the quality is good, right? But even better... And something that is even more impressive that I actually learned like a week ago is that the volume that this thing can do is ridiculous, right? And if you guys have ever heard me, I say that volume negates luck a lot, right? Uh, well, this is the ultimate volume machine. Not only does it not sleep, need sleep, rest, and management, but it can do 10,000 calls per minute. Okay. And um, I want to kind of like share uh, Nick and Jack. So you guys want to kind of like just jump in real quick um, and just talk about the experience of you guys kind of like pushing this uh, or selling this idea to, to businesses. Uh, primarily talk about the, the, the 
the potential and productivity with this AI agent? Yeah, for sure. So nice to meet all of you. I'm one of the co-founders of Inside AI. Um, and Jack's my partner, of course. So he's he's going to start off with the story, kind of how we got started and shifted into this space. And I'll kind of break down the numbers after that. Perfect. Let's do it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, guys, I hope you're really taking in this value here. Because if you guys, the ones who take advantage of this, you're, you're going to change your life by leveraging these AI infrastructures. Um, so yeah, me and Nick, we both started off similar story when we first met. We were both um, probably doing what a lot of you guys are doing right now, which is the commodity, right? You're selling the 1500 a month retainers to book appointments for whatever um, local businesses. We were working with med spas. Um, and we were only doing, we got up to about five, seven K a month, but we were spending all day, every day working our asses off for a 1500 a month retainer, um, from a med spa who in our experience, half the time would file a dispute and take the money back, even if we got them the results. So we slowly started to realize that it exactly what Serge was saying. It's not, it's not as much about how hard you're working more. So what you're working hard on. And we realized we were selling commodities. Everybody and their grandma all of a sudden knew how to run Facebook ads. So we just uh, had to kind of change direction. We joined GCP, um, saw how beneficial AI was. We were always talking about, man, if only we had AI to book our appointments and we didn't need to use VAs to do all this, manage them. Um, and then when we saw AI as an opportunity, we knew we had to jump on it right away. And then we were talking, set up a couple... Uh, set up pretty much everything for the business inside AI. And then we started our ads running January 1st of this year. I remember going to bed New Year's Eve. We launched the ads. I wake up. We already had like eight booked appointments for that day, like for the next day. And we 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 talked to each other like, holy shit, man, this is, this is the opportunity here. We had no structure at all. We would just hop on sales calls and we closed our first deal like three or four days later, which was 5K, which was more than we had made pretty much every month prior to that. And we were like, yo, what this, this is what we can do with this. Are you serious? And so we kind of just kept going in the first three weeks, we collected just over 30 K and we were like, damn, okay. So this is, this is what AI can do for people. And every business owner sees the value in it. They love it. And so we've been scaling it ever since. And now we're at the point where we are able to teach other business owners how to sell AI to businesses as well and leverage these infrastructures to really change the course of their life and their business's life. And just another thing to add in there um, that Jax mentioned, so that 5K that we collected, the amount of work and effort that we had to put into that one 5K deal was probably less than an hour. So once it was set up and released into that guy's business, I did not have to speak to him ever again right? Whereas for these med spa retainers, we were charging a 1500 monthly retainer for one client, right? So for the guarantee that you offer a right, 20 booked appointments for one appointment for one med spa client, I was losing sleep overnight because they weren't paying their pre-deposit fee, right? So it was a complete game changer. We actually, well, like while we were launching these ads, we still had our existing clients because we didn't know if it was going to work. And as soon as like New Year's Day and we saw those appointments, we were like, it, it's over, right? And and said goodbye to to the uh, the old ways, right? The, the selling the commodity. Um, but yeah, to kind of to kind of break down just how different um, it was. So not only were we implementing this for other businesses, but we were utilizing it ourselves. And what was happening was every day we were getting probably 30, 40 leads coming in uh, through through ads and then also through our Instagrams, people DMing us. Um, and just from those, those those leads, right? We had it set up so that um, the AI software itself would, uh, through automations and high level, nurture them and then actually call them to get them booked in. So each and every day, instead of those leads kind of getting shit out, right? The 30, 40, um, it, the AI was actually nurturing them and we were getting an extra three to four bookings every day just from that triager that we set up um, and the AI booking in those calls on top of the ads already. So it was a game changer. We were spending less than 10 to $15 a day with the AI booking in another three to four appointments every single day. Um, so really breaking down that that uh, the cost and how low it is um, yeah. to, to actually have it run. 
Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know. I think I know. I knew Wyatt was using it for his own um, uh, appointment setting, but I didn't know you guys were also using it too. So that's sick. Um, one of the things that you know, because in your in the VSL that you guys leverage, you guys explain it pretty well. You want to kind of like explain the the pitch that you guys use when you're kind of like selling it, like comparing it to like having ten sales reps versus yeah, it would take yeah. ten days or yeah. Explain that part because I think yeah. it was really sick. For sure. So like. This is how we'll always pre present it to businesses because no matter what business you're talking to, they're going to benefit from this massively. And we we always compare it to just the work that the AI can do versus a team of humans. You can't compare it to a single human because that's just not fair for the human at all. You got to compare it to like a team of 10, 100 humans. And so we talk about if you have a lead, a lead database of say uh, 100,000 leads, that's going to take a team of 10 appointment setters like three to six months to call a whole database of a hundred thousand leads. And you all, you you guys all know that the first time you call somebody, it's a 90% chance they're not going to pick up. And then what you got to follow up with them again, that's going to take another three to six months with a team of 10 people. And then you're also paying these people a salary, probably 2k a month. So that's 20 grand a month. You're spending on these um, people to dial. And 90% of the time, the money you're spending is for them to just dial and get no tangible outcome because people aren't answering. And so this time that they're spending where it would take them three to six months to call a um, hundred thousand leads, you set up the AI, it calls them in 10 minutes. And then the 90% of people that don't answer, that's fine. You just have the AI call them again later that day, 10 minutes later, whatever you want. The next day you have it call them again. You can nurture this entire hundred thousand lead database. You can have it get called 10 times in like an hour and a half if you really want, or you can have it follow up every every day for 10 days, which is what we do. Um, so any lead that slips by, you have the AI follow up with them. You can have it, you can set the AI to follow up with them every day for the next 10 years if you really want. And it's <laughs> gonna take you 30 minutes to 45 minutes to set up. You set it up, you put the leads in and it's gonna call them. You just let it run in the background and um, you're not having to pay the salary of appointment setters. You're not having to pay any of that. Like Serge said, you're paying 11 cents per minute. And that's only for the calls that they're actually talking to. So if they're calling people and these people aren't answering, you're not spending anything. It's not costing these business owners a single cent unless somebody picks up and then it's 11 cents per minute. So just the the opportunity cost of human team versus the AI, it's just not even comparable. You'd need a team of literally 10,000 to 20,000 people to compete with a single AI. And it's just, it's just not fair for the humans. Yeah. And I think this is, this is, this is for me when I learned that I was like, okay, whoa. Right. Cause, um, I think, and this is why I keep saying like, for me, it didn't make sense for me to talk anything about AI. Cause I'm like, I don't care about chat GPT being able to give me an answer of what uh, an NBA is or what, what, like, what is a strategic plan or what is, uh, how, how, how to code. Like, I don't care about that. I don't need answers. I need something to solve a tangible problem. I need it to replace a job function. Once these guys started selling it and I saw what it could do, I was like, okay, now we have money to make. Because it's true efficiency, undeniable efficiency. You don't need to go and sell, hey, I'll give you 20 appointments or you don't pay. Bullshit. If you're still doing that, like everybody else you guys are seeing on ads, these guys are not, I mean, I'd love to see how many people are actually making any money selling these, I'll play setters or I'll do this or you don't pay. Right. Of course, they do that. But in their agreement, you have 15 pages of conditional guarantees. Hey, if this happens, you you don't get the refund. If this happens, you don't get the refund. And then, they're, yes, on the front end, they're lying to you. They're promising you the world. But in their agreement, they have like conditional guarantees where you can't. Like, why are we playing this marketing, you know, ch chasing tails for, for like for what? Right. So that's where for me, like this became a lot more interesting. OK. And uh, one thing I want to do is before we go over the commoditized offer, Wyatt, I want you to kind of like walk through uh, and actually play an example of this call of this AI kind of like, um, you know, just doing its thing and walk them through the air, air that AI 2.0 that's about to release. And of course, show them just show them the actual thing, right? Because I think okay. we've talked a lot about things, but we haven't actually showed you guys what it looks. Okay, cool. Hello. Can you hear this? Yep, we can. Hey, hey, this is Mike with the Gym Launch team. I saw that you filled out a form on one of our websites. 
Does that ring a bell? Uh, no, I don't remember doing that. No worries. Sometimes these things happen. Well, the reason for my call today is that our CEO, Alex, personally asked me to reach out and see if there are any ways we could help you scale your gym. So to give me some context, could you give me a quick 20-second intro to your business? Man, I, I really don't have time for this. I totally understand that you're busy, but I promise this will only take a moment. Can I just ask you a quick question? Yeah, I guess. Awesome. I appreciate it. So what are currently some bottlenecks you are facing within your business? Uh, I mean, I am struggling to get leads and getting some clients in the door. I hear you. It can be tough to generate leads and get clients through the door. Could you tell me a little more about your struggles with lead generation and client acquisition? Yeah, it's just, it's been a struggle. I used to do flyers, but I guess they aren't working. I just don't understand things like Facebook ads, so, so that makes it hard for me to run them. It's just a bunch of problems. I can understand how frustrating it can be when traditional methods like flyers don't seem to work anymore, and navigating platforms like Facebook for ads can be overwhelming. It sounds like you're dealing with a bunch of challenges. Let me ask you, have you tried any other marketing strategies besides flyers and Facebook ads? I mean, I, I've tried billboards, but that it didn't do good. I see. So billboards didn't yield the results you were hoping for either. It can be tough to find the right marketing strategies that work for your gym. We specialize in helping gyms like yours overcome these challenges and achieve better results. I believe we can really help you with this. So I'm going to schedule a growth consult with someone on our team to assist you. What time zone are you in? Uh, I'm in Virginia. I don't know what time zone that is. No worries. I've got you covered. Virginia is in the eastern time zone. Now, what time works best for you? I have a few available slots, Friday, December 22nd at 3 p.m. CST or 3.30 p.m. CST. Which one works better for you? The 3.30 actually works pretty good. Great. I'll lock in that time for you. Just to confirm, you can 100% make the call at 3.30 p.m. CST, right? Yep, I guess. Awesome. I'm really excited to hear how your call goes and most importantly to see you get results. So everything is good to go over here. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. All right. All right. That, that's that demo of how it sounds. Um, so now I kind of want to walk you guys through what some of the numbers look like. So here goes um, some numbers just from cold calling um, and, and what we've seen off one of my clients. And he actually, I convinced him to put some campaigns live so I'd have some more data to show you guys. He did this. Uh, these three, I believe, were within the last week, except for this one. Actually, this was from Christmas. These two were from the last week. Convinced him to, to run some more. So we'll just, just kind of go from the top down. He spent $300 um, dialing 17,000 people about 1,300 picked up and he got 12 appointments. Outcomes are appointments at $25 per appointment. Next one, he spent about $500 calling 28,000 people, 1,600 people picked up. He got eight appointments at about $64 per appointment. This one, he dialed 13,000 people. Four people actually booked an appointment at $20 per appointment, spending a total of $81,000, not $1,081. Um, and then right here, 11,000 dials. Uh, he spent $166, got 24 appointments at $6.93 per appointment. Right here, he spent $300, got 50 appointments at $5.95 per appointment. Uh, right here, he spent $66, got 12 appointments at $5 per appointment. 150 got free um, appointments at $50 per appointment. $78 here, 16 appointments at $5 per appointment. And then $137 at 22 appointments at $6 and 26 appointments. So it's, it's really crazy, the results. I know it's kind of fast there, but you guys can look at it and read it on, on your own terms, but it's crazy results. I mean, it, this is cold calling to homeowners in the US. So this translates to real estate, to solar, HVAC, anybody who would call a homeowner um, in the US. And you know, to even think 26,000, 28,000 dials is gonna take months. Like Nick and Jack said, that will take months for a human to even do. And they were able to burn through that um, and book eight appointments at only $500. So you're going to spend like three months to dial 28,000 people on a 10-man team, paying them all $2,000 um, to pay to eventually pay them like, what, 40 grand, probably 40,000 in, in salary by the time the months are over or, or however much it may be, plus commissions. Plus it took time like that. Time's the ultimate form of leverage. Like if you're not fast, you have nothing. So if you, when you compare the HVAC owner who calls people manually, takes him four months to dial this many people, and he's and he's spending uh, fucking twenty grand, and then you have the other guy who does this and knocks it out in an afternoon, actually in like ten minutes. So it's like you know, it's like it's ultimate leverage. So to show you guys some some stuff on the back end, what it kind of looks like is this is the standard editor for 1.0. You just go in here, you put in a prompt like, hey, it's Alexander from air.ai. How's it going so far? 
um, et cetera, looked at like you opted in for some ads. And that's just what it, it basically looks like. And this is what we've been using for a long time. But I was talking to some guys at Air, and I, I've got some cool stuff that me and uh, Serge are going to be able to give you guys, uh, which is access to Air 2.0, early access to this. If you guys go ahead, um, and Air and uh, Serge will be giving you some, some more info on this later. But essentially, we are going to be able to give you guys, everybody here, access to Air 2.0 ultra early. So now it has updated logic bases and the new AI genius mode, um, where it's essentially a, an in-house built chat GPT. So like, you know, the original standard editor is like chat GPT hooked up with a million APIs, but they actually raised like 30 million in funding to build their own in-house language model. And Air, the founders, that Scale 13 program, it makes $4 million a month. So they took every single closed sales call that they have had over the last six years of running that coaching business uploaded it into a, a language model, an LLM, and literally it's it's made for sales. It's the first ever model made for sales. So it's ultra good um, and it, it has an advanced logic. So instead of like, you know, another one where it's very linear scripts, you can put paths. So like, hey, prospect name, how are you doing? I'm not, I'm doing good. I'm not doing good. If they're not doing good, ask, you know, why, why is that? And then whatever it is, you know, it's like, oh yeah, very sorry. Can I ask you a quick question? Um, then they're like, sure. And then it goes into asking that question. It's like, hey, if there was a hundred dollar bill on the ground, would you pick it up? And if they would pick it, pick it up, it'd be like, yeah, exactly. That what we have to kind of do for your business is more valuable than the hundred dollars could ever be. That said, can I get you on a call and talk with our team? If it's a no, then they just go and end that call because it's not worth time wasting with them. Then it asks, you know, would you be free with our team? You know, does tomorrow work? And if tomorrow works, goes into that. If tomorrow doesn't work, ask them what day it would. Uh, and it's just super, it's, this is a very small example of how things can work, but this can get crazy. I've seen a lot of awesome people that other people with early access have been able to build. And I'm, I'm super pumped to get you guys in here. And it's just crazy. It knows everything about a business. Um, you can pretty much put in a million task cards, like for a human to have this many task cards in front of them. Like if anybody here is in sales, like being able to expect your closer or SDR to have like, Every question at the palm of their hands is impossible, but you just can upload like hundreds and hundreds of uh, flashcards in here, and it just knows it all off the top of its head like snappy. So it's just crazy. Um, it, the, op the opportunities are limitless, and with 2.0 and the first ever language model built for sales coming out with air, um, it, it, it's the future. Absolutely. I love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, I love if you if you were the one doing this webinar, I think it would happen in 20 minutes. So I think you should maybe try to so you take over my job. <laughs> but I love how you how you're fast. It's good. I love it. I love it. Uh, but yeah, but just to kind of like reiterate on that. Um, imagine if you are running a real estate company, right? And you're an investor. Let's say you're Grant Cardone, right? And you're looking for the next. Um, let's say you can't. You know, you've bought every other hundred million dollar, two hundred million dollar, quote of a billion dollar. Um, properties in Florida in every beautiful state but then you're like okay you know what I want to go into um you know into single homes right and I want to deploy a billion dollars worth of capital right um how do you do it and you have to do it in one month with it building a sales team a bunch of cold callers a bunch of outbound people maybe a bunch of real estate agents who are partners right or you could just be one investor AI dialer, a hundred thousand, a million lead lists, a million people on a on a database. Call them in a in a single week. Call them for every week. Get your appointments. Have a sales team of like 10, 10 people qualifying properties, and you go deploy your capital, right? Like it's almost like it it changes the landscape of how anything is done, especially in the in the brick and mortar space in the in the in the in these older industries right insurance appointment setting for realtors uh contractors hvac solar like you can literally just run a whole solar business with a good fulfillment partner ads ai dialing and that's it right so it just creates insane um, kind of like efficiency, right? Now, let's go over the old $100 million offer versus uh, what you guys have to do today, okay? So Hormozy released this book called $100 Million Offers, right? How to make offers so good people feel stupid saying no, right? This was Hormozy before, okay? So let's say there was this one guy who knew this um, 
who had the secret on how to create a great offers. And everybody else was just pushing a bunch of squares and didn't really get any momentum, right? Everybody was just trying to sell Facebook ad. But now that everyone has access to this asset, everybody now is moving at the same thing. Creating $100 million offers or offers so good, people feel stupid, say no. If everyone can create the same offers, then creating good offers is not a competitive edge because now everybody can use it. Now everybody knows about it, okay? This is something that I want you guys to understand. And please, please understand this. You're not going to beat your competition because you're better at creating guarantees or risk reversals and things like that. That's not how it's going to work, okay? Because everybody now can do it, okay? Making, making a good offer doesn't provide you with an edge anymore. Giving a guaranteed money back, everyone is already doing it. Positioning your offers done for you to reduce sacrifice for your prospects, everyone is already doing this, right? Making bold claims won't help you either. We have literally hit the peak of promises. There are people saying, hey, I'll place sitters, and if they don't get you a private jet, you don't pay. I'm like... So how are you guys running a non? Are you guys running a nonprofit, or you don't pay? I'm so tired of hearing that you don't pay. It actually it gives me like, it it, it gives me like, uh, for me I don't know I don't even know how to how people make sense of it, right? Imagine being the business owner where to get clients you have to go on a, in front of a camera and say, I'll give you my time, I'll give you my team's time, I'll invest money in ads to serve you, and if you're not happy, you don't pay. Like, that's literally the only tactic people have nowadays to acquire clients. Like, it is sad. It is sad that our industry has gotten to that place, right? But how do we gain an edge in a market that is as sophisticated as ours? The answer is delivering undeniable efficiency. Right? No more marketing or sales tactics will work in our industry. The only thing that people buy today is true efficiency. The solution itself has to deliver efficiency, and the likelihood of achieving that efficiency needs to be high AF. Okay? Now, what is the one thing that can deliver true efficiency? Technology. And what is the technology that we're talking about today? AI. Right? But we have a problem. OpenAI is selling ChatGPT for $20 a month, and most of it is free. ChatGPT 3.5, I think, is free. You have to upgrade if you want to access more things, right? So how do we make sell selling AI? How do we make money selling AI when AI is a commodity? Well, the answer, who want, who want to give me an answer in the chat, right? How can the same foundational large language model turn into a system that businesses tend to pay ten thousand dollars for. What what is the difference between ChatGPT and uh, placing a setter? Let me know in the chat, guys. I'd love to know, like, why? How come we're? How come it's free on OpenAI, but we're making Wyatt, Nick, Jacks are making thousands of dollars for every month selling it to businesses, right? Sell the whole system, not just AI. How can I integrate into a growth creator model? Does it talk into an AI? I mean, I don't know. Could you tell that it was talking to an AI? Um, pairing with other services, selling, sell the case studies, integrate with other traditional systems. Love it. So I'll walk you guys through the process, right? Um, the idea here, for you to be able to, to sell this at this price point, you have to understand a few things. The first one is that there's a scarcity of companies that have successfully leveraged these LLMs to create good use cases, okay? I don't know if you guys have ever um, have ever looked into what it actually takes to build a thing like Air.AI, but let me walk you guys through the steps that you would need to solve, okay? You need data acquisition, okay, and preparation. You need to collect acquiring, collect or start acquiring relevant data for the training and fine-tuning of the LLM, right? This may involve in purchasing data from third-party sources, right? I think uh, Reddit just did a, I don't know if it was a $60 billion deal with, um, I don't know if it was Google or which company, but Reddit has a lot of data on their platform. 
and they paid a licensing. They were paid, uh, they sold a licensing deal for like 60 billion, right? But once you also have the data, then you need model development and fine tuning. You need to hire machine learning engineers, data scientists, and natural language processing experts to develop and fine tune the LLM for the specific task of creating a sales rep agent. Uh, and then, you know, it's a lot of labor costs, right? If you guys want to ever want to hire these people, you guys can tell me about it, but it's going to cost you a pretty penny, okay? Infrastructure and computing resource. Large language models like ChatGPT uh, require significant computational resources for training, fine tuning, and inference, right? And you also have to pay for high-performing GPUs and TPUs. For, for those who know, NVIDIA has a $2, billion, $2 trillion because they're selling most of the GPUs that these models are using, right? The cost of renting and purchasing these resources can be substantial. Software development and in integration, building custom software application APIs and integration to integrate the LLM uh, sales rep with existing sales systems and workflows incurs development costs. This may involve hiring software engineers, UX and UI designers, project managers, all that good stuff, right? And then, and so on, domain expertise and consulting, training and change management, quality assurance and testing, ethical and legal compliance, right? We have the FCC or FTC, um, is it FCC or is it FTC? I forgot. Uh, but it's going after these, um, these, um, some of these bots that do like cold calling, right? So there will be a lot of regulation. So you actually need also a team to figure out, hey, are we respecting the rules and um, for this industry, right? Contingency and, you know, miscellaneous expenses, right? Everything else that can go wrong. If you do not have millions of dollars or comfortable raising millions and millions, Forget about building this AI AF software, right? That's why a lot of the current tools that are out there and the reason why I did not necessarily get excited when I started seeing them, they're actually pretty shit because all these guys are doing is they're taking a little bit of AI, a little bit of OpenAI's you know, large language model as a foundational model and then just going in and just coding a bunch of stuff, connecting a few other tools and they're like, oh, our software can do AI ch chat. Like what, what are you talking about? right? For, for this to work, your AI needs to be as good, if not better than the human, for it to make sense. Why would I pay money to buy something that isn't as good or better, right? And the, the, because it costs so much, what error that AI has done is that they've launched a licensing fee, right? To get access to license the same uh, software that, you know, wide and every partner is leveraging, the minimum, I think they have a free version of it, but that one is pretty shit. But to get better features and to get better productivity, you need to spend 25 grand, 50 grand, 75 grand, 100 grand. Uh, and I think they also have uh, a, co uh, a quote of a million, right? Um, and uh, to license their tool because they know that they've b probably built the most sophisticated AI dollar in the market right now, right? And that's why you guys will see that you know, a lot of people don't really know what softwares are out there. And it's because there's no other, there's, there isn't many softwares that are actually good. There is a bunch of average and shitty softwares, but most of them are, don't work. So no one has really been um, able to figure out some that are good, right? Even the base model of, of, um, of Air.AI is not that good, which is why it's not worth uh, anyone kind of like leveraging it, right? And that's why everyone in my comments on YouTube was like, okay, what software do they use? What are they using, right? Everyone had no idea of what tools uh, that are currently being leveraged to solve appointment setting. And it is perfect for us. Why? Because we want to be early on this trend. Once it becomes known like Facebook ad, there's no more money to be made, right? The other reason allowing us to charge high ticket, which some of you guys mentioned in the chat, is the model of delivery. We're building and releasing this infrastructure, right, in their business not charging a monthly retainer, okay? What the benefits of doing this is that prospects are willing to spend 10 times more money up front if they know that they won't have to pay down the line, okay? That's one. But we also get to make sense of charging higher ticket because we charge on the potential contribution. What does that, what does that mean? For those who have not seen the way we, we tr structure our infrastructure offers is that we charge 10% of the potential of the infrastructure multiplied by the probability of experiencing that outcome. So as an example, if you're selling a 25K a month, uh, you know, added in, you know, in potential revenue, let's say that's 300K a year in growth potential. And let's say the probability of it happening is 50%. 
we go to a business where we're like, hey, this infrastructure or this thing that I'm going to build in your business has produced 300 grand, half 50% of the time for every person we built it for. So that ends up being, I believe, um, 150 grand in um, probable um, uh, growth contribution. I only want 10% of it. And then we get to charge 15 grand for it, right? And then on top of that, if you're doing a lot of growth, uh, you know, if you're adding a lot of growth, you can get 10 to 25% of profit uh, slash revenue share in the businesses that you you work with. That's how we price it. We don't price on how much time did it take us to build it. We don't price it based on how hard is it. We don't, we don't do none of that. We just charge based on potential and it allows us to gain a lot more uh, profits um, instead of being like positioned as commodities, okay? Another benefit is that We end, up, we end up being so profitable that we can afford superstar talent, okay? So let me tell you this. The reason why Wyatt and everybody else is, is making a lot of money is not because they're selling this AI infrastructure alone. It's because they're making so much profit on the front end that they can now afford a growth consultant. They can afford an amazing media buyer, lead gen expert, and they can afford an amazing sales consultant. What that means is, they come into a business that are like, hey, you need this AI infrastructure because it's just going to do 10 times, 13 times more work than your, your sales team, right, in a single minute. But on top of that, I'll oversee, audit your legion. I'll look at the way you're going after, what markets you're going after. I'll look at your offer. I'll look at everything. And I'll also consult you on your sales process, on your sales systems. Now, the business owner that you're selling, they're like, wow, not only am I going to get inevitable value on here, but you're also going to make sure that you solve every other potential bottleneck that I may face when integrating this thing. That's when you charge a lot of money, right? And if you're stuck charging 1.5K per month, you can't afford to, you can't afford experts who are going to solve these, these other bottlenecks for your clients. And this is the thing that most people never understand. You got to understand that you need money to afford this. It's not that you sit down and you learn every single thing. No, 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 no. That's not how people do it. You acquire talent. Okay? And growth consultant is 10, 20K per month. Great media buyer who really has a lot of experience, 8 to 10K per month. A sales director, 10 to 15K per month. You need 30 or 40 grand per month in cash to be able to afford uh, to solve these other problems for your clients. And that's before you make any money. Right? So if you don't own this talent, selling AI alone will not solve your client's business problems. And that's where they will start having objections. You'll be like, oh, but I also don't have enough leads. So this AI is not really going to help me. Or, hey, I'm having trouble with converting with show rate. This AI is not going to solve that, right? Or, I mean, it might solve it, but like closing rate as an example. So that's where if you have this talent internally, you can be like, hey, I'm not going to be like everyone else who's just selling you one Facebook ad service or one appointment setting thing for a low ticket price where they can't afford nothing, right? I'm going to solve the whole gap. Most people who just sell commoditized services never scale past 250K per month because they have average talent in their business and they can only solve one problem for their clients. And that is the thing that I want everyone to understand. Once you understand this lesson, okay, that... When you charge, when you sell something that is not commoditized, you end up raising a lot more money, getting a lot more margins. And that margin is a competitive edge because then you can go acquire every single solution that would keep your clients from being stuck. Okay. This means build and release offer on the front end, high ticket, crazy margins, ridiculous margins. Actually, it's disgusting margins. Okay. Then I can afford amazing talent. If you guys ever work with us, you guys will see the type of talent we have in client acquisition at IO, I promise you, it is not cheap, okay? And if I had not figured out a way to be super profitable to attract talent and pay them well, I wouldn't be here today, okay? And better talent means I, they can do things I can't do. And if they, since they can do things I can't do, then that means that my clients are going to have a greater experience. If my clients have a greater experience, then they have a higher retention, I get more case studies, and then it's just a flywheel, right? And it's a beautiful thing, right? So a few things as to why uh, this this AI thing and positioning it with a build and release is better is expensive to build proper AI. 
So there aren't that many tools that are good. Licensing deal, you probably need to spend 100K to get access to the same licensing uh, deal as Wyatt. And uh, because of premium pricing, great margins, we can afford experts that consult our clients on other business problems, okay? That is the key, okay? And the outcome, Wyatt went from charging four, 450 to 1,000 to 12K, okay? It's the same thing he sold, right? And uh, I want to show you guys this example. So I was in my car the other day, last Friday. Um, no, it was, yeah, it was Friday. And so I bought these fruits, right? And I bought some shoes. And I want to show you guys how it works. Because visually, I can talk about these concepts, but let me show you guys in real world what build and release looks like, okay? So I bought some fruits. There were some kiwis and some strawberries. There were maybe like five strawberries and five kiwis. I paid seven fucking dollars for it. What the fuck, right? I could have literally gone in a, in a farm and picked it up for free, right? But the fact that they cut it up, okay, cut it for me, washed it, put it in a plastic thing, made it so that they could charge me seven fucking dollars, right? Do, do, do you guys get it? Okay. Okay, now let's go to shoes. These shoes are built in Vietnam, right? They cost $100. How am I spending $100 for shoes? Now, even worse, you know, if you go buy shoes like, uh, you know, like uh, Louboutin, you might end up spending like $2,000. How does a shoe cost $2,000, right? It doesn't make sense. But because they do what? Because they own the process, because they own the system and data, to make shoes or fruits or cut it up and wash it, right? They get to charge ridiculous prices. But here is something I want to make sure you guys understand. Forget selling fruits. Forget selling shoes. We want to sell the most sophisticated infrastructures. You want to be the person selling a 500 horsepower AMG. Something that not many people can build. How many people do you guys know? can build an, a, a, a Mercedes engine? Not many. How many people can set up the car to look like this? Not many. How many people can set up the whole thing? No, you don't even know. I don't, I don't know how to set, how to build a, a Mercedes. I don't know how to build a C63, right? The fact that I don't know, that I don't own the data, I don't own the talent, I don't own anyone to put it together, means Mercedes, when they release these cars, it costs $150,000. Now, is it true that it costs $150,000 to make? Probably not. But because, okay, so what, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to become an engineer and go build cars? No. So I guess I have no choice but to pay them. That is the logic around this idea, is you need to own data, process, talent, and do something that is so sophisticated that most people cannot acquire. The more the more scarce the thing is, the more you can charge for it, okay? There are cars for $5,000, guys. I did not have to buy this car. So to say that it's, a, it's about solving a better thing, no, it's not about solving to move. Like, it's the bus. I could have taken this bus right there. It was probably $3, but instead I'm in a six-figure car, okay? That is the whole idea. Do we all understand the idea of building and releasing? You want to own... You want to own... This back end, guys, please. And let's sell some AMGs, guys, right? Let's not, let's for, forget lead gen, okay? If the only advantage is the fact that you have a contractor in the in, in Pakistan who can do lead gen, holy shit, you're in trouble. This is, this is, this is literally, I just open up a website, I click Upwork I, or Fiverr, I can start your business today, right? You do short form editing, I can start your business last night in my dreams, right? You do closing, I can go on Twitter, write a single tweet, find a closer in 25 seconds, right? You guys are selling things that are so available that why, why would I even pay you? That's where you guys are seeing Cole Gordon. I'll give you a setter or you don't pay. Iman Ghazi information now he's selling his courses for 39 dollars a month because he realized that now everybody's selling information right 
Why did Sam Ovens shut down consulting.com? Do you think it's because the business wasn't making money? No, but it's because the more co coaches, consulting coaches, coaches, coach coaches, it's a crazy world that we live in, the less money he's going to inevitably make because now everybody can compete with him. So what did he do? He went the path of building software, one of the most complicated business to actually be successful in, right? He had to go spend every single dollar he had made from consulting.com to be able to start the business and make it work. Foundational insight, guys. Do hard things. That's where the money resides. And if you don't, please do not complain that you're not making any money. Okay? All right. Now, let's go into client acquisition. And then um, I think we'll be... I think this is the last point, I believe. Yeah, okay, cool. Now, a lot of you guys want to know, okay, now that you guys have seen the 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 um the process or whatever and the, the AI and everything, how do you guys actually get clients? How do you get appointments? How do you book calls? So I want to show you guys some of the data that we have from some of the, the partners in GCP uh, selling this, okay? Solar metrics. Uh, Dylan is in uh, solar. He spent $180, $39, uh, 39 booked call, 39 leads, 20 calls, which ends up being $4.06 per lead, $9 per book call in the solar niche. He ended up closing one deal uh, from a campaign where he had spent $150, right? Anybody can do the returns on $150 spent on ads to make 6K. And you guys can tell me what that return is, okay? Insurance. We have Josiah, who's in uh, insurance. Um $5, $6 cost per lead, $26 per booked call. Uh, we collect, um, you know, this data from um, from uh, our partners, right, on a weekly basis. Wedding venues, cost per lead, $14 uh, per lead, $61 per call, right? Uh, agencies, you know, um, if you want to sell this to agencies, you, you know, it's $33 cost per lead, uh, $75 um, Calls booked at $54 cost per booked call, right? This is a, an audit that you guys will get access to. Um, and the thing here is you won't find any other offer with this low of cost per lead and this this cheap of cost per booked call, right? Now, I want to ask you guys, right? Because everyone keeps telling you guys, you should, you should do outreach before you start an offer. You should do it yourself. You should do appointment setting yourself, or you should do some crazy stuff. But how many people on this today's call, out of the 400 people still here, would skip mm -hmm. outreach, would skip cold calling, mm -hmm. would skip cold email, okay? If they could access the acquisition infrastructure that generates leads for $5 and calls for $20, how many people would actually just skip the whole entire bullshit of like, let's do outreach? Blow up in the chat. Let me know. I mean... I personally would, guys. If I could get, man, I could I could find twenty dollars a million times over, right? But how many people in our space are waking up and being like, "Oh, I have to reach out to third to thirty leads on Facebook groups, and I have to do it myself." And once I've validated it, then I need to hire a setter. And then once I've hired a setter, then I need to learn to sell. And once I've sold, then I need to learn to hire a closer. Now you guys are doing what? Spending one month, two months, six months, two, one year, two years, five years to make 10K per month when technology can get you one year worth of outcomes in a single day for just 50 bucks. Like, I don't understand, right? And the only thing is the, the barrier of entry is like, okay, just learn how to launch an ad right? And just learn how to get $50. That's literally the only barrier of entry here, right? Of course, there is some level of uh, insights, but um, it's crazy to me that people still do manual outreach. And this is coming from someone who made millions selling appointment setting uh, teams, right? But today is not the goal, okay? So let me show you guys kind of like for us, all our partners, what um, we set up, okay? So we have a lead flow system uh, that they get access to. 
they get uh, access to the pre-launch infrastructure, the ad campaign assets, ad campaign structure, and set up lead gen appointment setting systems, right? And this is what it looks like. There's a lot of steps. There's a lot of work, okay? But you do it once, and then you get to spend $5 per lead, right? This is the actual campaign structure, the ad creatives, uh, the lead form, the GHL snapshot, uh, GHL landing page structure, ad campaign structure, right? Um, a lot of good things, okay? Uh, the systems for leads, um, you know, we show you, we, we get them to kind of like set up automation. So the leads come in and then they get sent to their channels and then their sales teams can leverage them. Zaps uh, for appointments booked, GHL phone number, all that good stuff, right? And then appointment setting. Well, once you have the lead flow coming in, you need a backend systems to make sure that you can um, actually set these appointments. Even though I'll show you guys some of the metrics, um, but a lot of a lot of calls are actually self booked in, so you don't need to build a big sales appointment setting team, or you can just use the AI if you want to. Um, Legion systems, pipeline workflows, and then from there you have the whole workflow around um, how to actually book calls, right? And then. Um, once you have these systems, these two systems installed, then you need to also understand the sales process, the sales system, okay? You need to understand the pre-call intent and commitment workflow. If you guys just get on calls with people who don't know nothing about what you're doing, you're crazy, right? So you need to have a, a, um, a sales asset that they have to consume. You need to have a bunch of pre-call homeworks, a bunch of good stuff like that. Then you need to also understand the sales, pro the sales script. You need to have a proper um, sales uh, mechanism. And then sales uh, delegation is like, hey, once someone, um, maybe you want to build a sales team, maybe you want to actually scale. Because, uh, you know, Wyatt and Nick, you guys want to kind of like share how many calls you guys are booking on average per day? Maybe Wyatt, you go first, and then Nick and Jax, you guys can share next. I think okay. he's muted. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, so right now we book um 30 appointments a day. Like we're on pace to do nine nine hundred this month no probably like 800 this month because we we've had business managers shut down on us a little bit we book yeah. 30 appointments a day it's crazy and how much are you spending on ads a thousand a day so <laughs> yeah that that's kind oh, of the stipulation God. but everybody we hop on the phone with is incredibly qualified mm -hmm. um if they book and they're not qualified like we cancel 50 percent of appointments so realistically a little bit more than that yeah okay by the way let's just put into context the reason why i ask him how much money is spending on ads it's not that I expect anyone here to essentially have that kind of budget. But why is how old are you now? Have you have you are you still sixteen or are you seventeen? Oh, dude, I'm barely sixteen. I, I was fifteen when I joined. Like, yeah. Okay, cool. So, sixteen years old, having to allocate a thousand dollars a day on ads, like what the fuck? <laughs> I okay. So let me. The reason why that's impressive is because with client acquisition at IO, I think the first time I ever spent a thousand dollars a day on ads was last year, Q4. It took me three years of quitting my job and four or five million dollars before I ever got the courage to spend a thousand dollars a day. So by the way, that's just props to you, courage. Because I personally I wouldn't I'm like, hell no. Thousand dollars a day is a that's lot of memory, money. Bro. Right, the guy who spends a thousand a day and the guy who spends a hundred a day for ten days get the exact same data. True, sure. that's true. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I forgot <laughs> you're smart. Um, cool, Jack. So you guys, and Nick, you guys want to want to share kind of like yeah. what, how your guys are, what your performance is, please. For sure. So I think so. As soon as we started, like Jack said initially, New Year's Eve we launched them. Uh, we were getting sub two dollar leads and sub seven dollars per booked appointment. Wow. Uh, since then it's gone up, but we're still at about four or five dollars per lead, mm -hmm. um, and fifteen to twenty dollars per book call. Uh, right now we're fluctuating between one hundred fifty dollars to two hundred dollars um per day of ad spend. Okay. Um, and we're getting on average eight to twelve booked appointments. Um, per day. The thing is, a lot of a lot of leads they just hold on to it. We don't let them book three days in advance. Mm. Um. But yeah, crazy numbers, right? Crazy, crazy low. Yeah. And I wanted to say, because Serge, you were mentioning how crazy the profit margins are. And I wanted to say how how fucking crazy they actually are. Because some people might be expecting when you say crazy, like 60, 70, 75%, right? Which is still good profit margins. But in January, like Nick said, we were only spending 60 bucks a day on ads and we were getting still 
six, eight, 10 booked appointments per day. And wow. we did 35K that month and our profit margins were 94%. That was our insane. January numbers. Like the profit margins are really insane with this. Um, this is, yeah, wow. like those were the numbers. It's it's crazier than you were probably thinking. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get you to clarify on the profit margins, but th guys, there's two reasons why. Okay, let me just maybe break it down. How come they're getting 94% on this offer? And by the way, you want to share? Well, your closing rate was in January. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, also another point. <laughs> <laughs> so me and Jax, we were literally hopping on the call, no structure, nothing. And I think we clocked out on, if we're rounding up a 3% close rate. <laughs> okay. okay um, so stop there. Stop there. Okay. I'll just break it down here. <laughs> At a 3% closing rate, they were still 94% profitable. Let's repeat that, okay? Out of 100 sales calls, they were only close to, we were able to close 3% because their sales process was shit or their sales script, right? Even with that, because this is such a trendy thing and the cost to fulfill isn't high, they still had 94% margins. Now, let's say we take their closing rate to 10% with three exit. Now, the profitability becomes ridiculous, right? That is the idea here, right? And that's why for me, like if you guys ever get into this, um, into this process of kind of like pushing this AI offer, you go straight to ads. There's no, there's no, there's no manual. There's no, no outreach. There's no, none of that. Okay. Find 200, $500, go straight to ads. Okay. But it's insane. Okay. Um, cool. And here is the simple pitch of AI because so that you guys can kind of like get it. This is not an emotional sale, by the way. It's purely logical. You audit their current lead flow. You ask them, hey, how fast are you guys reaching out to the leads that come in? How many leads do you guys have in your CRM? Okay, cool. What are the conversations looking like? Okay, cool. How many calls per book day uh, are you guys getting? And that's their current situation, okay? And then what you want to do is show them a hypothesis. If all metrics stays the same, but we increase the speed to lead to two minutes or less, right? And did 10 times more volume, what would be the potential outcome, right? We keep the same lead flow. We keep the same everything. The only thing we do is we do 10 times more DAOs and we reach out to people in less than two minutes. What would be the potential, right? And then at the end, you want to just be like, hey, would you pay $10,000 to experience this new outcome? Send me the credit card details. Let's collect some money. Let's get to work, right? That's literally that simple. You don't have to talk to them about, you don't have to ask them about what they want to be when they grow up. Or you don't have to ask them like, do you want to, you know, pay for, you know, kids tuition? Do you want to buy a new car? None of that bullshit, right? Just show them the numbers, right? It's not simple putting all of this together from scratch. And I'm talking about this whole thing, right? But once, once, you, once you have this infrastructure built, then you start consistently generating um, revenue, okay? Or at least you can start creating out outputs, right? The difference between agencies and consulting businesses we've worked with who scale past 50K to 100K per month is their growth infrastructure, right? You need every single system put in place. Without it, you're going to struggle, right? Most offers are easy to copy, but the marketing and sales behind the offer is what separates the business. And by marketing and sales, I'm talking about the actual inputs in marketing and sales, right? Not how it's done. It's what is done and how frequently is it done, okay? That is the important part. We make sure that every partner builds this internally, uh, for the companies uh, in our incubator, they access all the assets they can build so they can build it themselves, right? The right infrastructure makes growth uh, a choice, right? Just, just like, you know, Nick and Jax are spending 150 bucks, 200 bucks a day to get 12 calls a day. Well, why are they spending $1,000 to get uh, 30 calls a day, okay? So you get to choose. How many leads do you want? Do you want 100 leads a day or do you want 50 leads a day? And do you want... 15 appointments a day, and you want to close 
two deals a day. Okay, cool. Then maybe this creates a $2 million a year business, right? If you want a $1 million business, okay, cool. Then just cut it in half. But you get to choose, right? All you have to do is just change the number in whatever metric, and you actually now have uh, a machine that is predictable for you to make money uh, uh, as, as consistently as possible, okay? All right, I forgot. Okay, this I forgot that we had a 90% margin retention thing. All right, this is going to be the last point, and then uh, I think you guys will love it. So let's get into it. Uh, when I started seeing this potential of AI, I was starting thinking about how do we retain, how do we retain customers? How do we retain people who actually sold this infrastructure to, right? And I've covered this into retention model before, but I want to show you guys how it applies to this AI thing. Okay. Um, for those who have seen kind of like the uh, growth creator model flywheel and uh, how we actually do the value ladder, you guys should have seen that the way I explain it personally is you start with free content, you give away the solution for free, or you can have a low ticket thing if you want to qualify people. Okay. Then you sell the infrastructure. Once you've sold the infrastructure, you put everyone into a subscription or a community where they pay a few thousand, a thousand, a few thousand bucks a month. Okay. Out of everyone in that community, you get to pick businesses that you want to partner with long term or that you want to acquire. Okay. The old model. Now let's go over why the old model, uh, the old way of doing things. The old model of charging retainers and stacking 300 clients, paying you 2.5k a month, is not going to work anymore, guys. Right. It might have worked when people were still uneducated, but today there is an oversupply of growth and the people in need of it can, can replace you with 10 times uh, more value for the same price. What do I mean by this? That means that back then, let's say in five years ago, when you could just kind of like find a, a contractor, a media buyer, or someone to set up a funnel, uh, and that it was just the fact that you know how to find that person, that you get to charge that much, then now today you can't. Because maybe AI builds a funnel for them and it does it for $100 a month, right? So all the website builders, all these people who are trying to just sell um, kind of like add a, a premium on contractors, they're not going to do who are just trying to do arbitrage are not going to make any money, right? Instead of being afraid of technology, we will embrace it. How? Really simple. By asking ourselves a better question. In a world where technology is leading, what becomes the new gold mine? And I have a question for you guys. In a world where we know that technology is going to replace all of us, at least most of us, what is the new gold mine? Can someone give me the answer? In a world where technology is the gold mine, what is the most valuable thing that you can sell? Data, insight, compute. Connection, GC, love, shovels to the gold mine. Uh, how do I get two hours back? Holistic solution, money, hard asset, tech, AI, G23 level solution. Okay. Uh, I'll explain this. I'll give you guys the answer. I actually didn't have the answer. Or I, I knew the answer, but I wanted to make sure that ChatGPT agrees with me. I was like, hey, in a world of technology, what becomes the gold mine? And the answer was... Someone gave the right answer, by the way. Uh, I'll tell, I'll find them. One second. I'll find them. Ahnaf Hathan, you answered right. And the answer was, in a world driven by technology, data becomes the modern day gold mine. I'll tell you why this is true, okay? Why is this true? Because here's how it works. Technology is a system. And the way a, system, uh, a way a system works is that it requires an input to create an output, okay? So input goes through the process, right? The actions, the whatever, the iterations, okay? And then you get an output, right? An input, this represents resources, the data, or information that enters the system to be processed. The process is the series of actions, operations, or transformation that the input undergoes, the system. You guys can think of, you guys can think of AI as the process, as the thing that, that just takes in inputs, your data, your information, 
and then it creates an agent that can actually do the thing, okay? The output is the result, of course, that is created from the input and the process, then you get a new output, right? And this is how it works. You get an input, process, output. You can think of this as before when we're advertising by sending direct mail, the input was the writer, the copywriter who would write these letters, okay? And the process was delivery, th delivery, the delivery mechanism was, um, I guess, the, 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 the mail, right? And the output were people reading this, okay? And then today, the new mechanism of advertising is I create a video, an ad, I put it on Meta as a platform. It puts everything, finds the right pair person. Then I get people clicking on my ad and getting into opting in, buying the thing I want to buy. Okay. So you guys can think of the process is the thing that keeps changing. Okay. So you go from direct mail to people doing door to door to uh, AI uh, advertising on Meta or YouTube. Okay. These algorithms are amazing. Right. So the process changes when technology changes, but you always need something interesting. You always need an input, okay? Introducing AI means you create a new process. The desired output always stays the same. I always want more leads. I always want more appointments. I always more, want more sales. That stays the same, right? But something that is always constantly evolving, which I just shared, uh, based on the output, and, and that is the input. If you're selling, and here is where things get exciting, okay? Uh, let me please make sure you guys pay attention to this. If you're selling 10 AI infrastructures per month, okay? After 12 months, you'll have sold it to 120 plus businesses. And if you really want to make 100 grand a month, 200 grand a month, a quarter of a million a month, let's say you're selling it to 20 businesses a month, right? And then at the end of the year, you have 250 Let's say 250 business that you've sold it to. But here's the thing that most people are not seeing with this movement. The guy who's building, the guy or girl who's building this infrastructure into companies now has access to 120 to 250 businesses, insights, and data. They have the offer that works. They have the messaging that works. They have the targeting that works. They have systems that work. They have processes that works. They have the creatives that work in 100 to 250 businesses. Okay. Now, why is it true that you have access to this? Because you need, it. you need it to help them optimize their agents. So then you have access to 120 ways of doing everything and 120 different outcomes, right? That means that for you as the infrastructure builder and implementer, okay, you're actually seeing 120 years worth of iterations in a single year. If you're doing more, then maybe you're seeing 100, 250 different ways of doing something, okay? This puts you in an amazing position because every single business that you built an infrastructure for will gladly pay you thousands of dollars to access the data from the most successful businesses in their space. Do you guys get it? Please let me know in the chat because maybe I'm just seeing things I would like you guys to see it. The idea here is even though we're like, oh, AI this, AI that, AI this, AI that, we're actually not making money. We don't care about the AI. I, like this AI Webby that I'm, I'm, I got you in because you guys were excited about AI. But what I want you guys to see is the potential of owning 250 businesses, data, and insights and everything about what makes them successful. Okay? It, it, does this make sense? Right? Cool. Perfect. Let's get into it. Jim Launch did it, and that's how they were able to really actually build an amazing, valuable business in the coaching space. Okay? So, uh, for those who don't know, and I've shared this before, but Gym Launch had their front-end offer, which was a scaling program where they had, um, you know, the 16K offer. They would get people to kind of like launch a new positioning. They would get people to launch ads. They would get people to sell a certain way. And they were acquiring a lot of businesses. But what they 
what were, what really made them a lot of money was their back end offer. They had over 500 gyms paying them $3,000 a month, okay? And what they would do is the following. They would interview the top members in their community, find the common things to that the top people were doing, and they would distribute it back to the members who were paying $3,000 a month. But another thing they would do is they would spend money on ads to get the best performing ads in different industries, not, not different industries, but different offers and on different platforms. Okay. And they will acquire all this data. And for just 3.2 K per month, you would access the best performing in people in your industry and you would get 50,000, a hundred thousand dollars worth of ad spend insights and data. Okay. That's the only way you can stack 500 people paying you $3,000 a month, by the way, guys, you're not going to get people paying you 3000 bucks a month because you're like, Oh, we do group coaching in our community. Are you serious? You think people are going to jump to pay you three grand because you have a Q&A once or twice a week? Most people don't even show up to Q&As, right? Most people do not. But what people will gladly pay money for is true value, and that is data on what works so they can stop wasting their time, okay? Most people they sold growth infrastructure to for 16 grand ended up in the second product. And for 3.2K, you would access all this data. They, I think they scaled it to 1,000 people, by the way, right? And one thing that I want you guys to check out once this is done is go listen to this 2018 podcast. No, 2019, okay? This is the stuff. Like Hormozy today, the content is too fluffy. Like he's just, he's just generally just trying to appeal to everyone nowadays, right? But this is the sauce. Go to 2019, listen to this podcast. Understand how he went from um, focusing first on high ticket up front, but once they filled up their back end offer with such a high retention that they actually reduced the, the entry barrier, the barrier of entry afterwards. Okay, this is a great podcast. Another one is the new recurring revenue model. He breaks down how they were actually doing this and how they were able to create uh, a back end with 1% churn, less than 1% churn, less than 1% churn here, which is crazy, right? Uh, they went from PIFs to payment, two times, you know, payment plans of just two installments to literally getting people at 1K down to start and the rest uh, after they launched, right? They didn't care about being profitable on the front end because just their back end revenue gave them 66% operating margins, which is unbelievable, okay? This is the real game we want to play. We don't just want to focus on selling AI infrastructures for $10,000 one time. We want to retain these businesses forever, paying us $1,000. I don't even care if it's $500. You guys can decide what you guys want to charge them, right? But the more, the better, of course, right? Why? Because a business is only as valuable as its future cash flow, okay? And how guaranteed, the, the, how, how predictable that future cash flow is going to be, right? When an investor is looking at acquiring a company, they apply the DCF um, formula, okay? Where they look at cash flow today and cash flow next year, cash flow in two years, cash flow in three years, okay? They use a discount rate, right? So anyway, I'll just read this. They estimate future cash flows through financial analysis, industry knowledge, forecasting techniques, okay? Then they come up with a discount rate, which is most of the time based on the cost of equity or debt, right? Think of it as the opportunity cost of investing the money in uh, at other opportunities, maybe into a home, into maybe in a you know high interest savings account, right? Uh, and they're like, hey, why would I you know buy this, acquire this business when I could just get six percent return on my money by just keeping it in a savings account, okay? Right? Or if I raise money and it's the eight percent that I need to pay a year on that money, well. That is the rate that at which I need to actually think of when I'm actually looking at opportunities, okay? The goal with this formula is to help an investor figure out how much an investment is worth in today's dollars. Money today is more valuable than money three years from now. So if you're going to make an investment, you're best investing in the company that has the highest likelihood of having great returns in the future. Does that make sense, right? So the little secret no guru tells you, right, is that 
you're not as great a CEO because you can make, you can market and sell. You're only as great as how profitable and durable your business is, which brings me to giving you the truth about business. We're not trying to sell AI because it gets us rich fast. We're selling the most trendy thing because when you give the market what the market wants, the market will hand you their credit cards like they own the credit card company, okay? The business that has the most market share wins as they can sell anything to their customers and they'll keep buying as long as the product is good and as long as it gets created. So really, all that we're doing today has nothing to do with AI. I would have made this webinar on something else. If it's selling cars, I would have made this webinar on selling cars, right? If it was selling, uh, what was the, the thing that in COVID or maybe three years ago where um, you would kind of like ride the hoverboards. If I was an entrepreneur when hoverboards existed, I would have made a web on hoverboards, right? I don't care what we're selling. I care that we create and leverage the offer that has the highest demand because if we give the market that and solve that problem, then we own that relationship and then we can build businesses behind that thing. Does that make sense? Let me know in the chat. Right? That is, that, guys, we're building great businesses. We don't care about build and release. We care about build and release because we give the market the best thing. And then they love us for it. And then we can really build a back end for it. Okay? So while everyone is telling you, oh, you started this business because that's the easiest way to make 10K per month. I don't care about what's the easiest way. I want to know what is the best thing today to sell. And then can I acquire market share? And then boom, can I now start selling cars? Can I start, can you, have you guys seen what Iman is doing? He's starting big day, a, 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 an e-commerce, a, 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 an e-commerce brand. What has that got to do with, with information? Nothing, but he could probably build that brand to nine figures. He started a SaaS company. He's probably going to make that a nine figure business, right? But do you guys understand that? If he had not started selling something that the market wanted, he would not be in the position that he's in today. Okay? So you have to do whatever it takes to sell something that the market wants so you can actually acquire customers, clients, and then raise money and then go do whatever you want. If you want to start selling products on e -com, you do that. If you want to start a SaaS, you do that. You have the customers to sell it to anyway. But people make the mistake of selling what they want to sell. And oh my God, do I hate founders who sell what they want to sell. I mean, I think they hate their own selves too because they're broke. There's no way you don't hate yourself if you, keep, if, you, if you go through years and years of doing things and you don't make any money, right? For me, I don't care what I like. I like what you like. You guys tell me what you like. I love it. I'll give you guys everything you guys want all day long. As long as you guys trust me and we do business together. Okay? Now, who's ready to go acquire some market share with AI? Let me know in the chat. Are we ready? All right. Cool. And... Amazing. Um, how are we still to have almost the same people that we started with? It's, it's amazing. Right? I love this. Thank you guys for, for staying with me. It means a lot. Okay? Now, let's go. Every single industry is ripe for AI. Okay? Think about local businesses. Solar, real estate, insurance, contractors, manufacturing. Think of e -com, Products, SaaS, e-learning, customer, like, you know, Ecom, just go change their whole customer service, right? Or maybe go implement this dialing infrastructure that calls every person who didn't fill out their, uh, who didn't purchase and, you know, clear their car cart, okay? Online service. These high-ticket service businesses still need appointments, still need people to show up, still need people to follow up with their leads. So literally every single industry, there is money to be made by applying these AI tools into their businesses, Okay. 
And there's two types of people today. And there's two types of people always who think that just because they've learned what is the potential of AI, that they're not going to make money with it. You're not going to make money until you, unless you understand the following. Growth comes from two things, your rate of learning and rate of change. What is the quality of what you're learning? How fast and how frequently are you applying that knowledge? Someone who is smart acquires knowledge and skills faster than anywhere else. But what they even do better is they change their behavior faster than anyone, someone else. Okay. Now you guys have the knowledge to go, let's say, go implement this AI thing, right? You guys know that it's, you can go leverage air that AI. You can go, you know, to them, can buy their license uh, and then just get on this opportunity, but you need the process of executing on this. Okay. So now let's go over how to actually do it. Right. Launch your AI infrastructure offer and sell your first offer in 14 days. Okay. I have a quick question. Was your time worth it worthwhile on today's training? Drop it in the chat. Did, did I do a good job today? It's two, two, two hours and 30 minutes. Two hours. Yeah, two hours and 30 minutes. I thought this was going to be shorter. Let me know in the chat if you guys found this valuable today, guys. Perfect. And did you learn stuff that you didn't know before? Let me know in the chat. Beautiful. And uh, do, is it clear now why this AI trend is probably the biggest opportunity for anyone to launch and scale an offer plus 10 grand, 20 grand, 50 grand a month? Let me know in the chat. And uh, do you guys see how you can go from having no experience with AI to building and releasing AI infrastructures into businesses? Let me know in the chat. Love it, love it. And is it fair to say that using this insight and this AI trend that I spent the last uh, two hours, almost three hours covering, it is unreasonable for you not to have a significant advantage over your competition that is still stuck selling leads from Facebook or appointments with VAs and setters, right? Let me know in the chat. And if we parted ways right now and you were left to your own devices to go off and do this on your own, it would be a worthy ideal to pursue, right? If it, if that, it was your only option, but today it isn't. But I want to clarify something. I'm about to share another option, but guys, even if you don't like the option that I'm about to share, please look into figuring out a way to use AI, okay? Like even if we stop this, this training right now and that's all you got, trust me, figure out a way to leverage this opportunity. You don't have to pick the second option. You really do not, like actually do not, but please, leverage this path okay i'm saying this because i've been in positions where it was hard to experience growth okay and i've been in positions where it was easy and i can tell you from my experience of building a business it is not about being smart it is about aligning yourself with the right trend and with the right movement so please the 300 plus 400 people watching this today and the thousands of people will be watching this Align yourself with a trend. It will be the most beautiful thing you've ever done for yourself and everyone you love. And I'm literally saying this as honestly as I can. Align yourself with a trend. That's it. Now, let's get into the second options, okay? Because you guys love, you, know, you guys know I love the second option, right? And I never change this part because it's just beautiful. It just flows amazing. So there is a second option, a second path where you can join our incubator and leverage client acquisition that is resources, data, systems, and partners to help you launch your AI growth infrastructure offer in 14 days or less, okay? And the idea is join our incubator um, for AI growth infrastructure offers, right? And I've shared this before. Uh, I sh keep sharing this, this quote. Uh, Give me a lever long enough and a fulcrum on which to place it and I shall move the world. We've decided to release every insight we have about launching and scaling an AI growth infrastructure in growthspecialist.io, okay? We want to provide the lever and the fulcrum to the next group of leaders who want to get into this opportunity with the hopes that they end up seeing impressive results and decide to become partners in GCP, right? So here's GS.io's offer for anyone who wants to push AI growth infrastructures. 
I want to kind of like show you guys what is the value in the incubator by showing you guys what are the obstacles for anyone trying to get on to launching this offer. The first obstacle you will face is figuring out who is the ideal person uh, in niche to sell this infrastructure to. In the incubator, we will provide you with the niches and the, that this AI agents gets the best results for. And you'll pick the industry you have the most clarity on, right? A lot of the time people are like, okay, but I don't know who to sell this to. Well, you don't want to make the mistake of picking any niche, right? You want to pick the niche that has the closest, you want to have the niche that you have the most insights into, or at least you have the, the easiest ability um, to acquire insights for. I cannot go sell to people who, uh, who like make roads and build bridges because I know nothing about them. I don't even know how to start that business, right? But if you tell me to go f work with investors, I can effortlessly go find insights on them because I can just listen to five podcasts a day and I can be as good and as knowledgeable as an investor who's been doing it for five, uh, for five years or 10 years, okay? So that's the mistake number one. So we give you guys the niches. You guys just pick the one that you guys have uh, the most clarity on, okay? But there's also another thing that we do in this incubator. We don't like, like this idea of giving people the thing, the people to sell to. So what we also like to do is we give you the framework that um, our members of GS have leveraged to find their own profitable niches because it is crucial for you to master the, the skill of finding insights and trends on your own, right? And one of the um, members who did it is, um, one second, let me just put this here. We have Dan who joined GS.io, I believe, um, two months ago. Then he ended up closing his 12K deal uh, with 10% ref share. And this is his own, like he picked the niche. He came up with his own insights. He built up his offer on his own, right? Following the framework that I just covered and uh, where it's able to close this deal, right? And he sold it to Web3 agencies, which is an interesting niche, by the way. I've never, I've, I don't really have much experience in that niche. I don't really deal with much of crypto and um, the, the metaverse. <laughs> um, but he leveraged the framework to find his own offer. And he sold his first 12K build and release with 10K rev share, right? And uh, as you guys can see here, he joined NBL first, of course. He could only afford two months uh, during Christmas. And uh, once he jumped into GS.io, he did 300 outreach, $250 spent on ads uh, to hire people, got two setters, booked some meetings, and finally closed one, right? Um, the second obstacle everyone will face is creating a high-ticket offer with AI uh, when AI will get competitive fast, right? In the incubator, the idea is the following. And of course, guys, as soon as I release this training, everyone literally will literally have thousands of people wanting to jump on this training, okay? So that's, that's a guarantee. So knowing that this is a fact, how do we get, gain an edge over most people? Well, let me tell you, this is how we gain an edge or how we personally do it. In the incubator, the idea for me was, you know what? I'm going to release the AI insights, but what I will also do is give access to members in the incubator, the playbook we leverage to scale companies. That means that when you join the incubator, you'll get access to our frameworks around building offers, picking market selection, selecting the most profitable markets, the different pricing models, how we craft VSLs, how we craft seven-figure lead gen systems, whether that be paid media or outbound, how we build appointment setting systems, funnels, how we design sales scripts, okay? So that way, not only do you have the AI offer, but you can also go to a company and be like, hey, I can solve more bottlenecks in your company and consult you on them, okay? That is the only way you can compete in today's day and age, right? You need to be a full, like a, um, a full stack growth expert. You cannot just be a, an AI integrator, right? That's not going to work, okay? With these skills and AI offer, you will ascend to the top 1% of growth experts uh, and you'll complete, you compete with infinitely less businesses because they're only masters at one scale. That's what I want you guys to avoid. You don't just want to be also just an AI integrator because that's also going to be commoditized. You want to be a full stack growth expert. You can come into a business, look at what they're selling, look at their messaging, change that, set up their lead gen, maybe pick the move them to a different channel. Appointment setting, you solve it with the AI. Sales, you design it based on what you're seeing from uh, the insights that we've covered in the program, okay?
Obstacle number three, when launching this, uh, this offer, you need to be able to communicate and create conviction in people with no clue of what AI can do for them. What that means is you need to be able to sell people before they speak with you on a sales call. So what we do in the incubator is we'll provide you with a VSL our partners are leveraging to educate and create beliefs and prospects before they jump on sales calls. We all know how much we hate speaking with uneducated prospects, right? We hate it because they never buy, right? And they're actually annoying. Uh, not only do we give you the steps to creating it, but we actually give you the scripted uh, VSL so you can personalize it to your niche, right? And this is kind of like the, the steps of kind of like building the VSL, but that's not the point because um, this is not what you guys will be focusing on. Um, obstacle number four is when launching this AI infrastructure, you need a way to generate lead flow and appointments fast and at an affordable cost. So like I told you guys today, no one who works with us does outreach. No one who works with us. I mean, of course you can. If you really don't have a credit card, then that's okay. But you, but most of them, we're trying to get them to just buy back their time. We don't want you spending time. Time is priceless, right? So in the incubator, we will provide you with the paid acquisition infrastructure and most importantly, the data, quantitative data and qualitative data that's generating leads for five to $25 a lead, appointments for $10 to $50 in 10 different niches. This means you get the performance creative that works, and how you can leverage them for your ads, the best performing audiences to target, the best performing copy for ads, the funnel that's converting 4% of the leads to become self bookings, right? So that means that 40% of most people pushing this AI offer through ads uh, of the leads that come in are booking themselves on calls, right? You can get the remaining 20, 30, 40% by just using uh, Setter, uh, but you can get it the 40% of all of them to book just with this funnel, okay? You also get access to uh, the entire CRM, which comes with the set setting systems, the email sequences that you will need to personalize. Uh, but the beautiful thing here is that you skip creating, you skip the work of having to create each variable yourself and just get the final output of what the perfect thing, at least for, that's currently working for us, um, looks like for every layer of your client acquisition infrastructure. And the beautiful thing is that we're only sharing the variables that are backed by data we're not sharing just everything that we're testing. We're just sharing what works, okay? So that means that you get to skip figuring out this out yourself. Uh, you'll just get all the variables that make up this whole thing that I showed you guys earlier, okay? Um, and then obstacle number five is really selling. How do you close deals without proof or a proven script, right? Well, you, you can, but you will burn through a lot of leads. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be dropping our Google Doc method close we use to audit businesses and show them a clear value that will be uh, created by implementing this AI infrastructure. Um, Abyssus, who's in e-com, selling email, building release for brands, um, he used it and got a 12K uh, deal closed and uh, the prospect paid on the call. We have Dan Tyro, who's in SaaS. He improved um, his sales process and now he's getting 34% plus closing rate with the Google Doc method. Uh, so this works really well. So you get access to the Google Doc method, close the script, okay? And uh, you'll also be able to leverage results directly from Air that AI, right? Showcasing uh, the cost per result in different niches. Here you have the, the cost per lead, uh, cost per appointment of $6 in the, in the car dealership niche. Uh, solar, you have this guy who's saying that he's getting uh, 100 to 1 productivity um, from the using the AI. You have insurance companies, $26 per cost per booked appointment. Um, so you get also these assets uh, from, um, from the incubator, okay? Uh, obstacle number six. This is one, it is the biggest one, by the way. So how do you offer this AI infrastructure to businesses if you haven't paid the 25 to quarter of a million uh, to air that AI for licensing? And this is where it gets interesting, okay? Every member in GS.io will access a fulfillment partner. What that means is members of GS.io will get the ability to access Wyatt as a fulfillment partner. They'll access the same licensing deal that will cost you over six figures and avoid having to build your own fulfillment operations. Wyatt's team will fulfill for every client that you close. Okay, 
So what this will look like is really simple. You create the offer, you launch our client acquisition, uh, that IO's growth infrastructure, you close the client, you get wired to deliver, you get your clients happy. And like I've showed you guys, of course, you get to retain them with data. Okay. You can sell whatever backend thing you want to sell, right? Since White is a partner in GCP, we've spent the last month building systems to handle this process and also training a few AI integrators to deliver for members of GS.io, right? Of course, you know, White doesn't necessarily have the, the backend operations to handle a lot of clients, but since he's a partner, we're incentivized in helping him make money so we actually have to back him up. So we actually uh, started up our operations to train uh, talent and we've trained um, a bunch of AI integrators so that they can support if ever members of GS.io end up just flooding him with uh, a bunch of integrations, okay? Now, only thing you'll need to pay is still, you still gotta pay for a small setup fee for done for your fulfillment after you've collected cash and not before. So that means that, let's say you go to Solar Niche and you're like, hey, I just closed this 8K deal. Okay, cool. Just apply, get Wyatt to receive the 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 the, the client's details. You pay 1.5k, 2k, depending on what this deal size is, right? The more clients you send to him, the less it will cost over time. But if you're charging eight grand, ten grand, you pay 1.5k to get it done. You don't have to worry about building a team. You don't have to worry about AI integrators. You don't have to worry about the dialing. Nothing. You just communicate with the client when it's done, and they will take care of it, right? This is still, uh, this is, by the way, still uh, still because to work directly with White and access this done for your fulfillment, you actually have to pay 10 to 12 grand uh, up front, right? So you guys are still getting a, a pretty amazing um, benefit from it, okay? Now, why are we giving such a no-brainer offer in our program, which is, which is the incubator program, right? Why not put this in GCP? Um, well, the idea here is really simple, right? Out of everyone who joins this 90-day incubator program, there will be a few superstar founders that come from it experiencing fast growth. That is who I'm making this offer for, right? That is who I'm making this offer for. For me, I, I could care less about this AI trend. I care about who? I care about smart people. I care about the entrepreneurs. I care about you if you can pull this off and naturally see growth, right? So that means that for me, my value is you join the incubator, you launch your offer, you close deals, you generate 20, 25 to 30K per month, and you end up finding a new insights and even better AI tools to sell. Then you join GCP as a partner like Wyatt. Then once you join GCP, then I happily will give you access to our resources, our team, uh, and then we scale your new offer to a quarter of a million, 500K per month as a partner. And I, I believe some of you guys have probably seen the offer that we give to partners, but it's a lot more thorough than, um, than what we do for, um, where is it? Like when you become a partner, we're like going through like a lot more, um, wait one second, where is this? Uh, no, it's here. I want to show you guys kind of like what you get access to in uh, as a partner, right? So we're coming in, we're building uh, a lot more things for you, right? So we're giving you access to the best performing ads, talent pools. You're getting access to our um, media buying protocol, uh, dialing infrastructure. You're getting access to our sales protocol. Uh, you're getting access to the webinar structures. You're getting access to the systems team. Uh, you get access to the financial infrastructure. You're getting access to the network, to the deal flow, everything, right? So my goal is, I want to attract the smartest people who can actually make a shit ton of money. Like for me to have wide as, as in our partner program is the most beautiful thing. And I want a hundred wides, but maybe you guys come in and you have a customer service AI. Maybe you have a way to replace sales people. Maybe you have a way to do, um, um, you know, as many things as possible. But for me, I need an incubator to find these founders. So that's why I wanted to launch this. And, uh, I believe it's going to be one of the best moves that I've probably done for our business. Okay. Now, offer details. I'll just keep it really simple. The program is 
a 90 day program, the price is 5.5K, right? But there is an important thing for you guys to get. Offer is 5.5K only on this website, which is webbyoffer.com, okay? For the next 24 hours, if you go on this off on this website, you will get access to this price of joining GS.ia for 5.5K. If you go through a typical appointment setting process, you speak with the sales team and then they you need to be sold, the price is $7,000. Why? Because I have to spend 25% to sell you. If you need to be sold, you're going to pay for that. If you don't need to be sold and you can just make the payment yourself on a funnel and then get 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 started, perfect. If you also need a payment plan, you'll need to speak with my team. Okay? The webinar offer.com link will be available for the 24 next 24 hours only, right? By the way, this is what it looks like. Okay? You can literally go ahead and buy it, right? Now, a few things that I need to clarify. We don't have the largest team focused on GS.io as our main focus is GCP, right? I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. The main service, the main product is still GCP. We don't, we're not in the business of kind of like getting people to start it, which is why we're selling it for 5.5K. It's as low as we've ever sold anything, but that's a problem. So our goal is, we need to actually now start allocating the team to focus on GS.io so we don't have that big of, of, a, of, a, of a team to do that, right? Now, another thing that you guys have to understand is why it's fulfillment cannot handle infinite amount of clients, right? Therefore, we're capping the Webby offer to 10 people who can buy it for 5.5K. If we get 10 people at this price, we'll literally take down the offer. And, you know, of course, you guys can still jump in the incubator program, but you guys will just jump in at a higher price. Uh, I believe someone purchased it yesterday. Uh, no, Friday, I believe, uh, because they know the Webby was coming up and they already were like, hey, I want in on the offer. So we actually have nine spots left, right? Uh, and then if we get too much demand, we'll increase the price just so we can limit and slow down the amount of people who can access this offer uh, and actually be able to fulfill, okay? So um, that is the offer, okay? And how to sign up? Really simple. Visit the, we the webbyoffer.com, purchase the program, sign agreement, join Discord, so you can get my team, uh, can get you onboarded, okay? If you need to speak with my team, we have blocked out slots here. I'll show you guys. You have today, one, two, three, four, five slots today. And tomorrow you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 slots. If you want to speak with my team, you have 12 slots tomorrow and five slots today. If you do not uh, book your slot today, uh, you will have to wait um, probably like Friday or next, uh, next Monday to speak with my team because uh, we actually have our calendars booked all all the time because we also have an amazing um, acquisition team that does uh, good work, right? Uh, so we've blocked out our calendars for this evening and tomorrow. If you can't find a time that works for you, you can DM me on Instagram or Facebook. But keep in mind that you will most likely only have another slot like a week from now since we book 20 to 30 appointments per day. Um, with our just regular operations, we get a bunch of people wanting to work with us in GCP. Um, so we're always booked, okay? Um, and, um, of course I have some bonuses, right? The value is already infinitely greater than the price. So I won't overwhelm you guys with 10 different bonuses, but I want to offer the first member to join access to the following. We will have a private onboarding call at 4 PM Eastern today. I'm thinking I might potentially move it to tomorrow, 12 PM Eastern. Um, because I think we're, I think this ended up being longer than I thought. Uh, but you will have a private onboarding call with me tomorrow, right? I'll walk you through the 14 day launch process I've built after looking at the most successful offers and campaigns from our partners. This will be a one hour long onboarding session. 
it will not be recorded or accessible to anyone else that is not on that call live. Okay. So this will not be something that you guys can access afterwards or this and that. I don't onboard people in GS.io, to be honest. Uh, that is done with uh, my team. So this will be your only chance for you to jump on a one-on-one -on -one call with me so that I can actually come in, access what experience you have, look at your experience, look at the niche, help you select the niche, help you pick out your acquisition, help you pick out your channels, help you pick out your VSLs, help you pick out everything you need, okay? I'll also invite Wyatt so he can actually answer, right? And uh, the first person to join on today's offer and hit, this is the second bonus, and hit 25K per month. The fastest growing person in the incubator in GS.io pushing this offer will get to join GCP and become a partner without having to pay. This means that you'll go from GS.io straight to GCP and the only requirement for you is to implement and generate cash flow and you'll access the following bonuses that I showed you. And the sooner you start, the sooner you can get to the revenue level and uh, become a partner like Wyatt, right? But this is only accessible to one person. We won't really be giving it to everyone. Uh, but guys, the reason why I put this offer at 5.5K is because I realized that all one person needs to do is sell one, sell one offer to make, a, to make an ROI, right? So I didn't want to price it so high that like, because we can, I just wanted to put it as low as possible so that if you only sold one deal, you can make your money back. Okay. So yeah, I think this is a pretty reasonable offer. Anybody has um, any question? Let's get into the Q&A, and then if you guys have any questions, we'll get into it. All right, cool. Um, if you also purchased, please drop it in the, in the chat. I'd love to, uh, I'd love to see. Um, uh, Serge, you never actually showed the AR infrastructure we should actually be selling. You skipped the walkthrough. Uh, well, why it did walk you through, right? It's that it's the it's the dialing. Now we can't really actually show you the actual um, how it's built, but it's the AI that you actually get to build, right? Um, <laughs> my brother already saturated the market. That's funny. Uh, cool, awesome. Anyway, uh, okay, everybody's trying payments. <laughs> it is crazy. Um, all right, cool. Anyway, um, guys, you get that offer on the funnel. If you still want to speak with my team, you can, uh, but let's go into the Q and a, can someone send me the, the form to, uh, okay. No, actually I got it. One second. I, I think just... white has something, something to say. Why you have something to say? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I actually wanted to show some people something. If you don't mind, can I share my screen? Yeah, please. You can, of course, brother. Uh, I need to be able to. Okay. Yep. Uh, make a co-host. Are you not? Okay. I'm Should not. But if you guys kind of look here, um, the way way I've set it up is so I filmed a lot of the stuff inside of the course, and you you guys saw me talking fast, and and that's just because I'm really fast with everything I do. Um, so I've made like a 24 hour challenge. Serge said 48 uh 14 days, but but this can be like five days if you guys actually do it so like in this 10 hour it's like 10 hours of content you can have it all knocked out in no time you're picking your niche you're building your offer you're making a copy and paste onboarding form so my team can come in and this is kind of how we do our work so i'm not going to walk you guys through that we're building that direct response funnel in 30 minutes we're setting up all the automations in like sub 15 minutes it's copy and paste we're giving you ad creatives and copies and, and that's only going to take an hour and 13 minutes and that's because like, I don't know if y'all remember, but Nick and Jax were saying they have like $4 leads. Like inside of this document, I share it with everybody inside of there. Right inside of this document, I have the exact ad that they are running that gets them $4 leads. I have the exact ad that I'm running that gets me, you know, super qualified $10 leads. So every single ad that is working for people in my program, people in Surge's program that are selling AI is inside of this document. And you guys literally just get access. Um, we're helping you create that ad account and stuff in an hour and 30 setting up the appointment, setting workflows and automations an hour and 30 minutes, and you're learning how to close in two hours. So it's literally like 
you join the program, we give you offer ads to run that you can just throw your logo on the exact ones Nick are running, exact ones I'm running, exact ones Dylan's are running. Um, my other client, Carson, he he makes 35 cam up. Exact everything. So you guys can literally jump in and, and make money and have everything set up in literally 10 hours. This afternoon, tonight at three o'clock in the morning, you can have everything built out if you guys actually implement it and join right now. That that and then in five five days you've landed your first 10k client. Easy. Then you pay me 2k and keep eight. Um the ambitions agency. Who's who's running the ambitions agency? Uh who just paid. Uh a suggestion you would give to a beginner who wants to implement uh, the structure as a growth specialist from your course. Uh, Nick. Oh, Nick. Shout out. Shout out, Nick. Thank you. Nick just joined, by the way. So shout out to Nick. I, lo I, I love you, Nick. <laughs> All right, cool. So I want to go into the Q&A. So let's go into uh, Q&A. By the way, I wanted to do. I, so quick. I wanted to do the onboarding at 4 p.m. But we do it at 12 p.m. tomorrow. Is it cool for everyone? 12 p.m. tomorrow Eastern. Does it work for you guys? Like a instead of doing it in an hour, because I'm kind of like three hours in, it's getting uh cool. Anyway, um all right, let's go to the QA form and then I'll go through. Uh so someone is asking, is there a payment plan? Yeah, there is a payment plan. You can speak with us uh with book a call and then you'll speak with the team. If you don't if if we run out of slots, then you might have to wait, but um, that should be fine for you. Um, shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, but let me go over the questions. Okay. So I think not many people ask questions on the form. Um, but I will, so I will kind of like look at the chat so I can answer some of your questions. Okay. All right. So we create custom AI assistance for businesses that with commoditized services like home services, gyms, uh, that integrate into social media, SMS, we charge three, 3k 3.5k and uh an optional 12 uh retainer afterwards looking at getting into ai dollars after seeing someone wins and want to come in how do you generally gauge uh the growth percentage of revenue added to the business um so i highly so this is where something gets a little bit compl complicated selling uh getting rev share is not as or profit share is not as easy as as in in most businesses especially when you're doing brick and mortar Right. Because one, you actually have to track that money. If you're not if you're not comfortable building systems, then it's actually gets pretty complicated. So I highly suggest if you're starting out, you have a small team, not a big operations, then please do not get into the rev share space. But once you build a team, you have an operator, you have people who can build systems, you can do rev share because you, you're required to have people build something of value to be able to track the money coming into these businesses like different models so you can actually make um, like, so you can actually um, be able to track this revenue. Right. Uh, Ged Yell said helping online coaches info products, their offer uh, and grow. How can I apply the infrastructure uh, in our current offer uh, leveraging this opportunity and not get left behind? Uh, this is how I would do it. If I was in the coaching space, I'm going to show you guys. I'll just share this real quick. Um, so let's say you're going to coaches, right? So the old idea was if you're selling um, to coaches, they're, they need a few things, right? So most coaches are always struggling because the positioning of what they're selling is actually not in demand. So they're selling something that isn't needed for the marketplace or they're selling the same outcome as everybody else. So they're also commoditized. So the first thing you would need to do is consult them on their offer, figure out a better angle, right? As an example, I'll give you guys a quick insight. We have someone in the Natural Born Leader community, our $49 a week subscription, where he's a dating coach, right? And he saw this idea of building and releasing infrastructures. And he was like, well, instead of me coaching someone on dating, what if I built and released the systems that he needs to actually pull it off? So what he would do is uh, he would actually build and release every single asset. So as an example, you need traffic. You need traffic to meet uh, women, right? So what he would do is he ended up building an advertising structure campaign and the right creative, the right ads, the right targeting, and everyone who would buy his program 
instead of just saying, hey, here's how you go and find women on dating sites, he would actually launch them an ad campaign that brings them social uh, followers, right? And then he would build and release the actual outreach script or the conversation script, okay? And of course, optional if people had more money because he was going after uh, high net worth individuals, he would be like, hey, you can actually get a VA to do outreach for you, right? But if you're selling this AI that uh, thing, you could potentially just create a chat or whatever. I mean, I don't see how that would work for dating, but let's say this is actually a business uh, case. Um, then you can kind of like get the dialing to call all the leads that opt into their social funnel instead of having a DM setter who's capped by time and everything like that. And then you could design their sales process or just show them how to do webinars, right? But this whole part here is replaced by AI. Every single thing here, you do it through consulting and through done with you uh, asset creation, right? So as an example, a lot of the things we do for our partners, I don't necessarily need to necessarily create an offer for them all the time because I've already created the frameworks on how to create offers. So they can just a plug and play. Does that make sense? All right. Uh, does it work for staffing industry? I believe I believe it would work. So any industry where they have to contact people. As an example, you're calling someone. Hey, are you still working at this job? Do you need um, Do you need a, a a better job or do you need? I mean, I don't know how the staffing industry works to be honest. Um, how does the AI fund leads to call? Um, you can do either lead gen or you can do um, uh, build, building list the, the, the traditional way, right? Um, someone said, I don't have a credit card to pay 5.5. They're outside of the US. Can I reserve a spot with a smaller payment plan uh, and wire the money? Um, so here's the thing for people who want payment plan. I think the, um, or if you don't have a credit card, you have two paths. Either message me in the next 24 hours when you do, uh, when you can make the wire, Send me a message on Instagram. I'll send you the details to make the wire. We can we use Wise so you guys can send money to Wise too. Uh, or if you guys want to send to crypto, I'll take crypto all day long. <laughs> and um, the third path is going to be, uh, or just speak with the sales team. Uh, they can give you a payment plan. But again, just know that you will still pay a little bit more because you spoke with a sales team that has to be incentivized. Okay. If you're building and releasing uh, offers, how would you go about managing everything and not get paid after the one-time purchase? Is there a monthly management fee? Can we tell that Jonas wasn't uh, on what I covered today? I did cover this, John. Were you not there? Mm. John, the idea is we build and release, but then we build a customer base, a clientele base that we can sell anything we want to afterwards. You want to start a cleaning business? You want to, you can do that. Look at this. I, I'm not the one cleaning this whole floor. It would take me, it's a full-time job. So you can start anything you want to sell, but you need to first use something that is trendy to acquire customers. And then you go and um, you own that customer base. The same way that um, OpenAI is giving the, the, the tool away for free or for $20 a month. What that allows them to do is it allows them to get millions of users. Once they own millions of users, they can resell them anything. Do you guys understand? That's the whole strategy with any tech platform. They acquire users for free or they, they give users the most value because they care more about owning you as a user than monetizing you. That's why most people who sell information are pretty crazy. Because imagine if I sold this as a course. Let's say this webinar, I was like, okay, this is a $500 thing. And maybe 10 people buy it. And I make five grand. Oh, wow. Exciting. Wow. I made five grand from selling a course. I'm a big info guy. Or I can give away the knowledge for free for three hours and then actually get to work with you guys long term. Right? There, so there's two different strategic moves around how you actually uh, leverage this. Um so after paying, we gain. Uh, so after paying, we gain access to air that AI, or we actually, or what are we actually buying? Um, you're, yeah, exactly. So you're the what you're buying. The reason why, actually, so let me try to ex explain why we did GSIO instead of just me telling you guys to go work with uh, White right away. So the the thing is, since we are a company that has worked with probably over a thousand businesses right now, building their client acquisition, 
we have a lot of data on what are the growth infrastructures that work, okay? And um, since Wyatt is killing it, I was like, hey, Wyatt, is it possible for you to, for us to leverage your offer, get more people into this opportunity, get more people paying attention to, to AI, right? You're going to still be incentivized because you're going to get customers that you can help fulfill, right? But what I really care about is how can I get as many clients as possible in AI, give them their acquisition infrastructure and get you to help them fulfill. And then we create more, more businesses that are making money so we can actually partner with, if that makes sense. Yeah, so it doesn't really, make sense. Like, yeah. Five, we don't care about 5K. Like if you can come in and give me and search $2,000 and you get 10 clients a month, that's what we're in it for. Like 5K doesn't even cover the time we're going to put into helping you get shit started. Cool, 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 cool. All right, cool. Uh, all right, any other question, guys? Let me know in the chat. Since people didn't kind of like fill out the, the form, I'll just answer the chat in the, I'll just answer the chat. So if you guys have any question, please let me know. In the, in the... Uh, Serge, uh, I made 85K front end in January with 150K uh, back end with AI organic client acquisition. I have proof. Can I become a partner? Uh, fuck, yes. What are you doing on this webinar? <laughs> what? Please. Um, you should probably DM me on Instagram, DM me anywhere. Let's get you on, on a call. Let's get you in GCP. I would love, I would love to, to, yeah, of course. Uh, guys, if you guys have insight into AI and actually can deliver proof, then you're already making money. Skip GS.io, jump into GCP. Let's actually make real money together, right? I'll, I'll, I'll put my whole team on this. Anybody who has an AI proven offer that's already making money, become a partner right away. The reason why we're doing GSA is so we can actually create more people like Jeremy that we can actually partner with. So Jeremy, with that revenue, you're perfect for um, for GCP, right? You can message anyone on the team, get, get on a call however you can, and let's work, Okay. Um, did Nicholas and Jackson have license for air that AI, um, or did they use free version? They're using White's licensing. Um, White's, um, uh, gave them the ability to license it. Uh, it's a hundred grand guys. Like, so it's not, it's not like, uh, it's not cheap. So most people who are pushing this, uh, offer are leveraging, uh, White's licensing, um, agreement. Uh, Pierre, yeah, I, I did get your Instagram. I'm not on Instagram right now. So, um, okay. Thanks, Jeremy, for DMing me. I'll check it out. Uh, let me see if I got your DM, uh, Pierre. And guys, put some questions in the chat. Naveen, on, on the normal Air AI, there's a couple bad things about it. So it's not very usable because you don't have priority servers and they, they acquire users like crazy. They spend... Um, $14,000 a day in ads to acquire new users. So you're competing with everybody else there. So it's really not going to happen. Uh, on my license, I can give you guys priority server access. You're going to get priority tech support from Air2. So not only are you going to be able to put out calls faster, your support's going to be handled faster. You also get a open API access. And as an added bonus for anybody that joins GS um, within the next 24 hours, because I do have to manually tell the engineers at Air to add you guys, you guys are going to get access to Air 2.0. Um, weeks before it actually comes out alongside the new genius uh, language model that they built in-house for sales. Yeah. And then, uh, so Amir asks, is 2K for every client we close? Yeah, it's not 2K exactly. It can be 1.5K to 2K. Um, so essentially, you have to pay Wyatt's team's time to integrate it. That's literally it. You can go sell it for however much you want. Wyatt uh, uh, is going to integrate it. Um, surgeon, I have zero clients, but got a credit card and ready to buy it, but I haven't generated 10 K in revenue. Uh, GS.io is why we created it. Right. So it's, if you have money and you're, and you, you, you think you, you're, you're, you trust yourself enough to be able to execute, then yeah, you join GS.io, right. Uh, it's 5.5 K you have 90 days to push through. Um, really simple. Tomorrow I'm going to be going over the onboarding. I'm going to be showing you guys the offer. I'm going to be showing you guys how we're going to create the messaging. I'm going to be showing you guys, and then you guys implement, you guys get it reviewed by our team. And then, uh, you guys just launch your acquisition. 
Uh, also, this... the main, not not the speak over you, but yeah, that that's what we're giving you. We're giving you the ads to run. We're giving you the offer to build, like everything. Literally pulling the curtain on everything, bro. Yeah. Can I start making uh, 10K by joining NBL? Yeah, you can You can make 10K a month just by watching my free YouTube content, I believe. You don't even have to join NBL. Uh, I'm running a podcast. What's the one advice you would give me to a beginner who doesn't have authority? Uh, you need to make money. Don't try to be an authority figure. You can't, you can't afford to be an authority figure if you don't have money. Like, it costs a lot of money to actually build presence online, right? Um, looking for someone to... St- partner with to start an agency to split the cost with GS. Uh, who's down? Um, I mean, I guess if you guys want to partner together. If we close, can we learn the software and integrate it ourselves? Yeah, just like Nick and Jax do, do it, have figured it out. They've hired their own uh, engineers internally and they're integrating it their way, right? So with Wyatt, you guys will get like a few niches that he's built kind of like templates. Uh, and proven scripts that are working already, but like Nick and Jax are actually going a completely different route where they're actually uh, building their own backend using um, uh, White's license, but like they're still, they're doing something completely different, charging completely different prices. Uh, So you have, especially with 2.0, I think people will have to, will have the ability to personalize it as they want. Um, So after White's setups, is, is it, for my business, will I be able to replicate it for other clients or you will kind of like need why to do it um, every time? Unless you want to get to a point where you can build your own operations, right? Um, like why can't we just access directly? Because it's, um, it's you can go buy it from air.ai. You can go pay 25 to 100 grand or 250K for their licensing deals. Uh, uh, any other question, guys? Any last questions before we end this? <laughs> um, so after pay, we get access to air that out. What are we actually buying? Okay. Edmund, you're going to need to rewatch the recording, to be honest. Uh, how can I use AI if it's not my first language? I mean, hire uh, hire a team that speaks uh, English. Does AI speak German? Uh, I don't think the the languages, um, the different languages, are that good. Um, does Wyatt or Jax have affiliate programs? Um, yeah, I believe they're also selling um, their thing on the side. Uh, how much to invest in ads for GS.io to make sense? Uh, I mean, I showed you that the cost for average cost per lead is from five dollars to like fifteen, and book to calls is like twenty five dollars to fifty bucks. So, if you want ten calls, then you'll have to have at least like two hundred fifty to five hundred dollars to invest in ads, um, and that should be the case. But if you don't have zero, if you don't have zero dollars to invest in ads, then maybe don't join. Just save money, right? I don't think I don't like for me, my goal is not to get you because you guys just uh, you got enough information today. What you need when you join GS, the reason why people are joining into GS is so they can get the assets to launch acquisition and get access to a fulfillment partner. Right. You are not paying for information like that's not what you're getting in GS.io. Eventually, even the next month or so, I'm going to be creating more content on YouTube for for free. So the knowledge is free. But the actual assets and data on acquisition and the partner um, is going to be different. Um, what is the difference between GCP and GS? G- GCP is we actually partner uh, with every person in there who's selling. Uh, we get 15% of, uh, of whatever upside they bring in um, above their baseline. And we also help them build their acquisition, their teams. Uh, we take care of, I guess, we help them with talent acquisition. We t- so... Once you, when you're trying to scale a business, it's actually not about client acquisition. It's not about appointment setting anymore or sales. It's more so about, okay, how do you actually now build a team that can do the things at a, at a scale big enough where you don't have to do the things as the founder? So as an example, for me in client acquisition at IO, current payroll is around 200 grand a month. And for that, I get to access uh, a sales leader, someone to lead marketing, 
someone to lead operations and systems, someone to um, to lead kind of like HR people. And I also get to build a, a, a bunch of people under me. But the thing is, then I don't have to be the best person at sales. Then I don't have to be the best person at operations or systems. Then I also don't have to be the best person on marketing. I just say, hey, here's where we're going. And every single leader builds out a plan on how to execute on the mission. So when people join GCP, they get to access our um, kind of like leaders and systems and uh, different operations, uh, all that good stuff, right? So that's the difference between GCP. And in exchange of that, you there is a fee, of course, to become a partner. And then also you get a percentage. We get a percentage on top of everything we build, right? Uh, anyone want to partner? Anyone wants to partner, guys? Uh, message each other in the chat. Just partner together. Pay the invoice on the webbyoffer.com. And then uh, I guess you guys got to be best friends, though. Because what if one pays and he doesn't pay the other one? What if someone pays and the person scams you? That that That's not me, guys. I'm not responsible for every partnership. Most partnerships don't work. So get in, in out of your own risk. Uh, isn't it copy-paste of if Wise is doing the same thing for everyone? Um, we're not, that's why I said, we're not going to be selling this in the same niches every, 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 everything, every time. Right. So if you're selling one, the AI agent in solar and someone goes into insurance, then it doesn't matter. Right. And there's enough niches and niches are big enough where everyone can make money. Just like the same way that there is an agency owner making 5k per month selling solar leads, but there's also an agency um, that was making five million per month doing this exact same thing. So it's like, is it necessarily competitive? Yeah, it's going to be competitive as soon as possible. But the best will excel, and the average mediocre will always struggle to even make any money in the same niches where people are making millions. Uh, do we also get a closer to take sales calls? Uh, not for 5.5K, guys. Like, come on. If you're a GCP, we would help you find a closer. Like right now, we helped White acquire closers uh, who actually used to work at Air.ai, but we only do that for our partners because it takes a lot of... Sourcing people is hard. It's probably the hardest thing ever. But you can find your own closers uh, in groups, I believe, right? Um, isn't it copy-paste? Okay, I've already answered that. Um, okay, who's Kaylin? People are blowing up the chat. That's crazy. Uh, can you send the recording of this, please? This recording will be available in um, in uh, NBL. Uh, are, are available to meet in real life in, in Montreal. If you join GS.io, we can, we can go to dinner tonight. I'll be happy to go uh, on, a, on a dinner date with you, brother, or sister. I don't know who's asking. Um, I might, can I pay in full after I transfer money in my savings, which takes three business days? Um, the the 5.5K offer will only be available for, for the next 24 hours. If you have to wait three days, you just can speak with the team and they'll give you a payment plan if you, uh, if you want to get in at a smaller. Um, uh, in Montreal, ready to work? Uh, yeah, just pay and just get inside or uh, just get started or I hope you guys have booked calls. Let me see. All right. All right. So they've opened up slots for later today and they've opened up slots for Wednesday. Okay, cool. The team is going to be working till later night today for sure. Um, all right. Uh, why do you call it an infrastructure? Okay. This is a great question. Why do I call it an infrastructure? So this is the reason why selling infrastructure is actually an interesting thing. So the idea of doing done for your services is the following. I know how to create the input that creates the output. So as an example, an advertising agency creates the copy, creates, t finds the targeting, finds the audiences, sets up the system, sets up the funnel for a business. And the business pays for the ability to create these inputs, okay? And that's two grand a month, three grand a month, five grand a month. Okay, cool, perfect. But then there's also another model of delivery, which is coaching or consulting. 
coaching or consulting is coaching you or consulting you on how to do this yourself. The reason why I say it's an infrastructure is because the infrastructure, what it does is it takes care of the thing that creates the thing. Meaning when I come and build an appointment setting infrastructure into someone's business, they now own an infrastructure that creates the inputs that create the output. So what that means is I place a setter, I build the workflow, and the thing happens in their business without needing my, my services every month. So now the selling argument becomes more strong because you don't have to pay me every month to get the inputs that create the output. And it's also not coaching or consulting because now if I just sell you coaching or consulting, you may not even integrate and implement. That is the reason why most people are selling coaching or consul consulting never have, have a harder time selling because there's a probability of me paying and getting the actual knowledge, but not executing. And then there's also this side of here of service providers who do done for you, who in order for them to actually do a great job, they have to hire amazing talent. But how many agency owners do you guys know who are actually willing to lose profits in order to find the best talent? Not many. So now you end up with a lot of service providers who only care about the fact that they have 80% profit margins and they keep their talent as average as possible. So now their clients end up getting the most, the shittiest talent possible because the CEO thinks that, oh, in order for me to get rich, I need to offer them the, 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 the cheapest talent so I can have the most margins and I can afford a nice car, a nice apartment. And now one month in, business is like, hey, I actually don't like your service. And then they churn. And the coaching thing either, it doesn't sell execution. So now we sell infrastructures because we're like, hey, I know that just the knowledge is not going to help you, but I also don't want to be the one, the type of person who's like trying to get the cheap talents to do the work. What if I actually built it into your business and make it inevitable for both things to happen at the most ideal uh, thing? So that's why we call that an infrastructure. You can call it a system. You can call it whatever, but you're just essentially giving them the thing um, that creates the thing, if that makes sense, right? All right, cool. Um, cool. I guess uh, that is it for today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed today's um, training. Um, webbyoffer.com for the next 24 hours. It will, oops, sorry. It will be live for the next 24 hours. And everyone who joins, uh, we're getting you guys onboarded at 12 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. So please do not uh, miss the onboarding call. It will be hosted by me. I'll have Wyatt available. So you can also answer any question that you guys have. And then uh, we start launching everything by tomorrow afternoon. Okay. So everyone, I'm just giving you guys 24 hours so you guys at least can have the time to join for everyone who's joining so that uh, I get get uh, the most of you guys getting the most amount of value and get access to the onboarding. Uh, but that will be tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern. And um, yeah, guys, that is it for today. Thank you guys for everyone who stayed uh, as long as you guys did. Let's, um, let's change the world. Message me on Instagram if you want to get in at 5.5K uh, and then I'll be checking my DMs uh, for anyone who has either a uh, payment issue, maybe you want to kind of like break up the payments. Um, if you, you know, you want to pay over the next few days, uh, or maybe your credit card limit is like 2K and you want to maybe break it up, you can also do that through DMs. You don't need to speak with the team. Uh, but for everyone else, get on AI. You have time. You don't need, you don't need money to get on this thing. Use your time. Learn for free, invest your time, invest your time. You guys just invest your time, keep investing it. Then go sell whatever you learn, implement it into businesses, raise money, then come and work with us. Uh, but uh, you don't need money. You don't, you guys, you guys do not, do not need to work with us to get started. That's what, that's one thing I want to make it clear. But I need as many of you guys to get on this uh, trend because if I was starting out today, I would get on it and guess what? I'm not starting out. I'm still getting on it. Okay. So emulate what we're doing.
do not try to just listen to what people are telling you to do. Actually look at real value, okay? Um, all right, guys. Take care. Love you. Let's go.